Hail the tribe of the internet. I am Morty and this is Starlet Hollow. If you haven't heard of this game before, this is a horror visual novel with a bit of a dating sim spice to it. I personally very much love this game. This isn't my first time playing it. I've played it many many times before and I want uh, to share all the knowledge and understanding of the story that I gathered so far. So let's get into it! My name is Mortis. I live in the city of Budapest. I am female, thank you. Now, on our first run, we are going to be mystical and hot. Both of these traits uh, we are going to need uh, at the end of chapter 4. So it's a bit of a time until then, but it's gonna be worth it, okay? I promise it's gonna be worth it. You draw it awake as the bus hits a particularly nasty bump. You feel like you'd only just managed to start drifting off. And now here you are, awake again, and still exhausted. For a moment, you're hazy on the details of where exactly here is, confusing this bus with the many others that came before it. But as your mind continues to reassert its existence in the waking world, the past few days come back into focus. The long last cousin, the bad news, the 26 hours of a bus ride with countless late night stops in city depot that would have been would have felt unsafe even in the middle of the day. You wouldn't normally find yourself traveling like this, but your cousin bought the tickets. The funeral of Pearl and Scarlet, your cousin's mother and your own, seemed like something you shouldn't ignore even considering your own late mother's rocky relationship with this side of the family. Missed. But it was also more than just the social pressure of the invitation that pushed you to accept it. Something has been tugging you back to this place your entire life. There was no choice to be made, because you were always going to find your way here. So when your cousin called, you knew what had to be done. And now, the end of your long journey is inside. You're almost in Scarlet Hollow. So anyway, as I was saying, <laughs> no, he's still here. <laughs> he's been sitting next to you for the past five hours talking at you without pause. You're not sure he even stopped when you started to doze off. At first you thought he was just being friendly, but that was several hours of one-sided conversation ago. I was up to Maryland looking for work, but mostly messing around because I was a dumb teen. Me and my buddies were doing our usual prank stuff. You know, pushing joggers into the harbor, that sort of thing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that just usual prank stuff, yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> What's wrong with you? No, no. Why are you talking to me? Oh, should we? Like, dude. Why, why are you talking to me? Why wouldn't I talk to you? We're on a bus. Buses are one of the best places to meet new people hands down, and you're the only person left to meet. But thank you, I guess. So this girl comes up to us, swinging her purse, yelling about how she was gonna call the cops or whatever. It was hilarious. She actually hit my friend and he said it hurt a lot, so I guess she was really mad and not just playing. But she kept swinging and soon enough she lost her balance and fell into the harbor all on her own. We didn't even have to push her. We had a good laugh and fished her out, and her phone got soaked so she couldn't call the cops on us. We wound up hanging out all day. I mean... <laughs> yeah, this is a way to get to know new people, I guess. She kind of became my girlfriend after that and we've been on and off for about a year. So it's pretty serious. Yeah, dude, on and off about a year. That's what I call pretty serious. The, about five months ago. She tried to break up, tried to break up with me, like for real. And jeez, you ever just get so mad, you just wanna like kill somebody? Ha! Did he say she tried to break up with him? 
You can't even begin to imagine what that might feel like. Nobody's ever broken up with you. Uh, I kind of feel like killing someone right now. No, no, no. I mean, all the time is maybe a bit much, but uh, honestly, I've been there, okay? I've been there. I don't know if the problem is in me or not. But yeah, I, I felt like felt like I would like to kill someone in my life already a few times. So yeah, let's say, let's say, oh yeah, all the time. I do the same thing, never follow through, of course. Oh yeah, totally, never would, of course not. Yeah, yeah, but I definitely think about it. Sometimes even plan it out, just, you know, to let off some steam. Wouldn't ever do anything. Yep, never. But a person, person can't help but thoughts they have, right? I mean, yeah, these are called intrusive thoughts, and, um, well, yeah, they, they are not nice thoughts. They are mostly these disturbing things in your mind, and uh, I have many of them. I honestly could have killed that woman. Oh, my man. Anyway, she's giving birth to our son right now, so I'm trying to get up to Virginia to be there for it. Now. I don't want to point fingers or anything, but if you've been on love for about a year and she is giving birth right now, then first of all, it's not necessarily your baby, you know, uh, your son, I'm sorry, it's not necess necessarily your son, it could be from someone else, and also if she tried to break up with you five months ago, then she was very well aware of the fact that she was pregnant at the time. So maybe, just maybe, you know, she wanted to break up with you because of the pregnancy. I'm just saying. I'm not saying you're not father material or anything, but, you know. But I don't know if I'm like into that stuff, so I might just wind up on a bus in New York or something instead. I've always wanted to go there. I mean, she maybe, she maybe will be better off without you, you know? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not, not my place to speak, you know? It's not my relationship or my child or anything, but... Uh, I think we are just gonna remain silent. I, I don't want to take sides uh, in this. You sit a wash in horror, but doing your best to keep a neutral face as this man admits his thought about murdering the son to be mother of his child. That's, that's not the problem here. A child whose birth he is currently missing and considering ditching to go have fun in New York. I mean, he should, honestly, he should. Anyways, where do you say you are headed? Mistaken. I'm coming home. My mother fled this place many years ago, but she's gone now, and I can feel it calling me back. Some things can only be put off for so long. The young man anxiously shifts in his seat. For one perceptible moment, it's his turn to feel uncomfortable before he catches himself and heartily laughs. Oh, you must be talking about Scarlet Hollow, right? Or the holler, as they call it in the mountains. That's the only other stop until this bus turns around. So if you aren't getting off at my stop, you must be headed up that way. Almost nobody ever goes there. I'm usually alone on the bus by now. Though actually, I had a couple of buddies who went up there to work in the mine. There is a coal mine up in the holler, you see. And there is always a job listing or two on the boards around here. I've never wanted to do that kind of thing myself. I like my lungs the way they are, thanks, but my buddies got desperate enough to try it. I haven't heard from them in a while, now that I think about it. I should see if they are on Facebook, see how they are doing up there. Ha! <laughs> Hope they didn't die! Oh man, I love this guy. He looks back at his phone, for once focused on something other than you. Oh, this is me. It was lovely meeting you. Hope you don't get too bored without me around to talk to. Also, take a look at him. He really looks like someone you wouldn't want to cross paths with. He is just, he looks like bad news. 
Here, I have something for you. The stranger rifles through his pack before presenting you with a drifting bag of peanuts. They are boiled peanuts. I got them at the gas station a few buses back. I noticed you haven't eaten much, so I figured you could use them more than me. Plus, they dripped all over my back, so I don't want to carry them anymore. Uh, sometimes speaking the dialogue option establishes new facts about who you are because we can be allergic to pain. But we won't be because in this run we are going to eat everything. Like literally everything. So yeah, nice. I love boiled peanuts. Thank you very much. You take the boiled peanuts. Nice. I love boiled peanuts. Glad they are going to a good home. And with that, I leave you. Safe travels, friend. Bye-bye. And just like that, the stranger is gone. Maybe you can finally get some sleep. Next up, Scarlet Hollow. End of the line. Almost there. The bus finally comes to a stop. Its brakes squealing as it deposits you in front of the Scarlet Hollow bus station. The sign at least reads bus station, but calling it that feels disingenuous. At best, it's a kiosk. Though for a small town like this, you're amazed there is so much as a road, let alone a bus that drives on it every week. The driver quickly shuts the doors behind you and starts the engine, kicking up dust clouds as he pulls away, eager to leave you and displays behind. Now, now. I want to show you something. So I don't know if you noticed it before, but that's a thing that the bus comes only on Mondays, so one day on a week. But it also arrives at 11 and it departs at 11.01. So you have only one minute to get on the bus. One minute and if you wasn't quick enough, you just have to wait another week. <laughs> and that's hilarious. And honestly, I hope we are going to miss the bus. I would like to stay in Scarlet Hollow for longer. Just saying. Yes. Hi, Daddy! You instantly recognize the one young woman from the few public photos on her Facebook page. She's your cousin, Tabitha! And she looks annoyed to be here. Uh, offer her a boiled peanut. Wait! Wait! I haven't eaten those! Oh my god, oh, oh, I chose the wrong option. No! Well. Well. Should we take a turn on this and try to offer the peanuts to everyone? I think, I think we should. I mean, if we can't eat them, we obviously should offer it to everyone. So, we are going to offer her our boy thing as a condom. So, I, I love Tabitha. I want to be friends with her. We are going to be nice to her and, and everything, but, but the peanuts. We have to offer the peanuts. Want some peanuts? I got them from the bus. <laughs> you hold up the dripping bag, offering it to your cousin. <laughs> what? Put those away. Why would I want your wet peanuts? <laughs> oh, now come on, let's go. I don't want to spend any more time down here, down here than I have to. I'm sorry, Tabby. Your cousin turns and motions to an old BMW parked near the bus coyote. You follow her, clambering into the dusty relic. It doesn't take much driving before the only sign of civilization are the car you're in and the road you're on. Tabitha maintains an icy silence as she focuses on the road. Uh, yes, explore, yes. Uh, how are you holding up? Fine. Mm. Okay, but if that ever changes, I'm here for you, alright? Even after I go home? Yeah, sure. Sure. <laughs> oh, 
oh dead mom's club oh i wonder should we the thing is that tabitha really don't appreciate this joke but stella does and if you go find uh, stella with tabitha at the end of chapter four then you can make this joke and they're both going to appreciate it. But Stella is going to, but Tabitha is gonna go with it as well. So, guess we are both members of the Dead Moms Club, huh? <laughs> Your cousin doesn't stare at you, and I see hatred in her eyes. Maybe this would have worked to ease the tension if she were someone else, but she isn't. I love you, Tabby. She turns back to the road, her expression caught, and I'm forgiving. I'm sorry, it was just, I'm sorry, we're gonna be friends, I, I promise. Uh, so the funeral, it's on Sunday, right? Yep, like I told you. That's almost the whole week. Uh, need any help planning? If you ever need help with errands or scheduling, feel free to ask. I know this stuff isn't easy. It's actually been fine, just needed the coffin and somebody to dig a hole. I can't believe we've never actually met before this. You have your mom to thank for that. Or head, I guess. Yes, the God. You can feel the same careless cruelty in Tabitha's words that your mother would use when she talked about Perlin and the old scurry. The wound that tore your family apart runs deep enough that it bled through the generations. You sound like her right now. My mother. She hated this side of the family so much. We don't have to become our parents. There are some things in life we get to choose. She is the one who left. Come in silence. You decide to sit in silence with your cousin as the car eases up the steep mountain road. Oh, this day. And here it is. The Scarlet Estate. They seem better days, its crumbling elegance is not lost on you. Someone used to cram the apartments in grey cities. Your mother told you about this place many times before she passed, always with an anger burning beneath her words. The faded majesty you once imagined doesn't quite compare with what's in front of you, a jarring blend of opulence and ruin. As you stare at it perched on the crumbling cliffside, you can't help but feel like it's something that should have been left to rot a long, long time ago. You're hit with a blast of dusty air as you step across the threshold and into the foyer. Everything in this room has been here for much longer than you've been alive, each object cemented in place with layers of dust and cobwebs. You can hear doors creak on their hinges, and the aches and moans of ancient floorboard, floorboards as the house itself sways in the wind. Welcome to our family's humble estate. Unfortunately, Due to the current state of the house, only a few rooms will be safely accessible during your stay. I wouldn't go wandering anywhere else if you were yearlings. The floors have been known to give out. If you know what's good for you, you will stick to your room, your bathroom and the kitchen. And hallways, I guess. But only the hallways you need to use to get to those places. I'll show you around so you know where it's safe to walk. You can leave your bags here for the time being. Thank you! So you live here? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It is. The estate was the price jewel of this region for a long time. It's quite a magnificent piece of architecture, even now. Shall we begin our tour? Yes, please. Follow me! You put your bags down and follow Tabitha through a long dusty hallway. She delicately steps over holes and tears in the floor, and you do your best to trace her steps. Kitchen. On Wednesdays, a woman from town comes in and does the cleaning. Her name is Janie. I wouldn't recommend socializing with her. She'll talk your ear off. If you need any food, there is fixing for peanut butter jelly. Mystical. As Tabitha speaks, your eyes are drawn to the windows and the overgrown garden outside. Dread and anxiety grip your lungs, and you can almost feel the ground beneath you start to sleep. This place is a step away from being swallowed up and vanishing forever. Don't touch my mac and cheese or my ice cream. Those are off limits. 
Oh, and you can also assess the garden through here, but it's pretty wide, so I wouldn't if I were you. Uh, explore, yes, prevent you from taking others, yes. Uh, this place isn't safe. And I don't mean that uh, in the sense of it being personal literal clip. Something is wrong here. Okay, jeez, I get it. You think it's messy. I'll tell Jane to be more thorough this week. But you should know there is only so much anyone can do with a country house this old. It's always gonna be a little grimy and worn. Unlike your sleek city apartment. If a little other bothers you, you're gonna have a rough time this week. Uh, Luffy BG. But what if I want ice cream? Then you can buy yourself some at the general store. If you touch my stash, I will know, and there will be consequences. How oh, Foxy. Mm, sweet, thanks. Oh, a good dog. <laughs> Awesome, I love PBG. Yay! How do you know it was one of my favorites? That's my second theory. <laughs> I didn't, but good for you. Thank you. Alright, what's next? Bathroom, follow me. Great, it's been hours since I've gone. As the two of you leave the kitchen, you pass by a tuxedo cat sitting on a countertop. Hey! Is that your cat? What's its name? Frufru, do not try to pet her. If she wants to be pet, she will let you know. Pet the cat anyway. Trust me, I'm good with animals. Who's a good kitty? You decide to ignore Tabitha's advice and pet Frufru anyway. She bites you hard and hisses violently. <laughs> So we fru fru. What did I just tell you? Come on, let's continue the tour. You once again follow Tabitha through a long dusty hallway. Maybe after a few nights it will get easier to navigate these spaces. But for the time being, you feel lucky to have not fallen through the floors. Guest bathroom. Not much to show. It's a bathroom. I'll wait outside. Do what you must if you must. It's a rushed bathroom, piles of junk sit untouched in the corners of the room, and misery stains paint the floor. What a nice bathroom, yes. Uh, who exactly uses this bathroom? Guests? Are you sure this toilet works? Uh, yes. Why wouldn't it? The water bills get paid. Therefore, the toilet works. Now, do your business so we can move on. What is so crusty? What, what is so crusty? It's fine, don't be so dramatic. Oh. This is the worst bathroom I've ever seen. You can practically <laughs> a bit roll her eyes at you from the other side of the bathroom wall. It would be a lot nicer if Janie didn't have a policy about bathrooms. She cleans mine, but refuses to do more than that. So you can blame her for the state of the place. Can I use your bathroom instead? No. Now hurry up and do your business so we can move on with our lives. So, I would like you to take a look at this bathroom. <laughs> we have a tiny little plate over here with two spoons. We have a, probably a mug of coffee and a wine bottle with leftover wine in it and a toothbrush. I mean, what kind of guests were using this bathroom? I'm just asking, no offense or anything. It's just, why? You know, why? <laughs> Lift toilet seat. Back skitter from the bowl as you leave the seat. Use it. The toilet is a toilet. Sure, it could be cleaner, but your business needs doing, and this is as good a place as any. You do what you must and rejoin your cousin out in the hall. Next up, 
guest bedroom, last step on the tour, follow me. You and Tabitha briefly return to the foyer before climbing the stairs and reaching the guest room. The room smells old. Dust, mildew, wood rot, it has it all. A week of sleeping in this place may give you permanent lung damage. This is where you will be staying. The linens are fresh, I had Jenny wash them last week. I had to endure a half rent about her kit to get her to do this, so you better be grateful. Mistakeable. An unmistakable stain coats this room. Someone has died here. People have died in here. The closet is full of old family stuff, so you can't hang your clothes up, but you can use the dresser. It should be empty. Mystical. People have died here, haven't they? I sense a heavy spiritual fog hanging over this room. People have died here, haven't they? When? This house is almost 150 years old. Obviously people have died here. This room is amazing, yes. This room is amazing. This is great, way nicer than what I'm used to. I can't say I'm surprised. Each and every piece of furniture in this room is a genuine antique, handed down through the family for generations. This is not an IKEA bedroom or whatever such nonsense you're used to in the city. Uh, we used to sleep here. Like I said, this house is almost 150 years old. Many, many people have slept here. And now you will sleep here, carrying on the fine tradition of bedrooms being slept in. I guess I'll start to get settled. Follow me, I'll take you back to the foyer so you can collect your belongings. This concludes our tour. I'm afraid I must return to my duties so you will have to entertain yourself for the rest of the day. Don't expect to see much of me. Uh, yes. Additional conversation pile. Yes. Ah. Hey, so is it cool if I bring someone over at some point? This. <laughs> just imagine the situation. You just met her. You just met your cousin. You've never ever seen her before. And this is the first thing you ask her. <laughs> I wanna do it. Hey, so it is cool if I bring someone over at some point this week. Specifically, I would like to bring over uh, Reese, if that's okay for you, with you, things. What are you talking about? You don't even know anybody who lives here. Gucci. Uh, plenty of time to meet a cutie. I'm a social butterfly, Tabitha. I don't know what to tell you. What does being a social butter butterfly have to do with inviting people into my house? Make friends all you want, Mortis. Just bring, don't bring them here. Is that really so much to ask? Uh, where are you going? To work? Somebody has to pay the bills around here. What kind of work do you do? I run the coal mine, same as every Scarlet who came before me. Except for you and your mom. It requires a lot of time and concentration, so I would appreciate it if you didn't keep me for long. I didn't know we owned a coal mine. We don't own a coal mine. I own the coal mine. Your side of the family forfeited any claim to it years ago. Can I come watch? What? No! The mine is dangerous. I can't babysit you and do my job. Mm. <laughs> Your boss? No. It's kind of sad. Don't you ever think about things you could be doing with your life that might give you a better sense of purpose than running a coal mine? Some of us don't have the luxury, luxury of choice, Mortis. Some of us had to stick around to keep the family business from crumbling, to keep this town from crumbling. <coughs> Words. Some of us had to temper our expectations for how our lives were going to go. There is a simple satisfaction to getting a task done, and that's all I need. 
do whatever it is you want to do while I'm gone. Just don't do anything dumb or dangerous, not while I'm responsible for you. What am I supposed to do? Are you sure you can take the day off? Did I do something wrong? Hey, did I do something wrong? You asked me to come to, f uh, to the funeral, but since the moment I got here, you've been acting like I spat in your coffee. <laughs> the coffee mug. The coffee mug in the bathroom. <laughs> What's going on? Was it something I said? Okay, I'm sorry I've been testy since you've gotten here. You've been fine. I'm just under a lot of pressure right now. Please just stay out of my hair until later, okay? I have work to do. Uh, are you sure you can take the day off? It's a special occasion. Your cousin is in town. No. Some of us have responsibilities. Mm. Chill with your cause. Okay, okay, I'll drop it. Thank you. I'll see you later tonight. Go into town, stay here, do whatever you want. Just stay out of trouble. I won't keep you, but we should hang out when you get back. All right, I won't keep you. Yes, but we should uh, hang out when you get back. Yes. We will see. There is a lot that needs to get done this week. Your cousin leaves through the front door. And now it's just you. You and the sprawling decrepit estate uh, here take a look so this is Enoch and uh, it seems like he had a puppy dog and I think uh, this is Maribel Scarlet and I don't know who she is maybe maybe I want to say this can be Perlan but I, I don't want to say anything stupid it probably had already and I will many, many times, but uh, yeah, that's it. Also, uh, this door here with the angel face thingy leads to the basement. And this, well, door kind of thingy here with the gold head, uh, I think it leads to the forbidden wing of the estate. That's all. We can move on. Uh, PBG is at the room. Uh, go straight to the Forbidden Wings of the Estate. Yeah, let's check it out. With Toby the gun, there is no one stopping you from going into the Forbidden Wings of the Estate. Yes. Except for locks and chains, sealing them shut. Now, if we would have uh, Street Smart, then we would be able to go in there. And uh, if we would have, um, what's that, Strong, the Strong Build, then uh, there is another room behind that which has been blocked with furniture and uh, we could move that and go even deeper in but we have neither of those so let's just go back mm, pbg yeah you haven't had anything to eat all day the only things louder than your stomach right now are the creaks and moans of this ancient place a pbg sounds exactly like what you need to take on the rest of the day you head to the kitchen. It's because you haven't eaten the peanuts. You're back in the kitchen, ready to craft a beautiful peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's a daunting task, given the state of the place, but the aggressive growls of your stomach outweigh your fear of food poisoning. Okay, now, first of all, first of all, we are going to pet Fru Fru. I don't know how and when, but this is my goal to the game. I want to pet Fru Fru. And also, I was wondering, who gave the flowers? I mean, they always say that no one likes Perlan, not not even Tabitha, honestly. So, who who gave all the flowers and this basket? Although I think it was Janie, because I can't really think of anyone else. It it should be Janie, right? To get started, you will probably need to find some peanut butter, some jelly, bread, a plate, and a knife. Approach Fro Fro. Yeah, approach Fro Fro. The cat hisses as you draw near, but remains firmly in place. This is clearly Fro Fro's spot on the counter. Bebe! 
You put your hand in an attempt to pet Rufru. She bites you viciously. Honestly, what were you expecting? I wanted to pet the cat. The cat emits a low growl as you ca cautiously back away. Aww. Search the fridge, yeah. As you approach the fridge, your eyes catch a note taped to the door reading, Jenny, stay out! In all caps, below it, in separate handwriting, are the words, Okie dokie! <laughs> you open the fridge. You already feel a deep urge to wash your hands, even though you have yet to touch anything other than the handle. Oh, if you would know... What's all this ice? What? Uh, you should really melt down your freezer. Tabitha, it's, it's not healthy. Come on. <laughs> you are so... The rotting carrots down here. Oh, Tabby, what are you eating, honestly? Oh, it's a minor takeout. Yes. <gasps> Why did you do that? What were you expecting? This takeout container is disgusting beyond words. A liquefied mess wholly congealed in its styrofoam shell. You can't even tell what it used to be. The substance doesn't just smell bad. It smells ancient. Oh. For God's sake, put it back. No, no, no. Eat it? <laughs> what is wrong with me? What kind of horrible goblin would do this? You think to yourself as you dip your hands into the goop. It's thicker than expected. Oh, I'm a spongy. You scoop some up into your red flow of a hand and slowly bring it towards your mouth, allowing its mass to permeate your senses before the slime. <laughs> Stop. Oh, your mouth. Sorry. Okay, okay. Okay, now, hear me out. I know it seems gross, okay? I know. But this is this is an experiment. It, it's science stuff, okay? The reason is that right now we are hot. And so if you eat it without the strong trait, you will eventually puke, okay? So it's going to come out. And you can puke in the diner. So what I want to know, that if I'm hot, then am I hot enough for them to just, you know, magically forget that I puked all over the diner and later on, I think in chapter 2, will they call us pukey or they will just, you know, magically forget it because we are so hot. So this is all for science. It may look bad, but this is all for science, okay? It tastes like rot, like the smell of decaying mulch and burning leaves and fish heads festering on the beach. It feels even worse, like your mouth is full of slugs. You can almost feel it writing in there, though perhaps that's just your own thought, convulsing in disgust at what you've done. No, no, no. Swallow it. <laughs> you swallow the slime. You've done it and there is no going back now. It slid down your throat like a mess of wriggling worm. Your gag reflex tries to reject it one final time before it passes into your stomach. But you're really stronger. A layer of waxy residue now coats the inside of your mouth and throat. And your teeth squeak with a slippery film, making it impossible to forget what you've done. <sighs> you have a feeling that the consequences for this action will be severe. A problem for future you to worry about. No, no, it's not a problem. It's an experiment. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> okay, but for real, why would the game let me do this if the, if the game don't want me to do this, okay? It's not my fault. I was given the chance, so I took the chance. <laughs> oh, check my mayonnaise. Sure, whatever. You know you probably shouldn't, but a part of you has to know how old that mayonnaise is. You pick up the jar, its label flaking in your hand. It expired 10 years ago. The jar of mayonnaise is old enough to graduate the fifth grade. Best to put it back and forget you ever saw it. Take jelly, sure. You reach for one of the unopened jars of grape jelly, carefully checking its expiration date. You breathe a sigh of relief when you realize it's recent. This was either purchased specifically for you, or jelly is one of the few things in this kitchen Tabitha actually uses. All you need now is a plate, a knife, 
bread, and some peanut butter. Better close the fridge and keep looking. No, no, no. No, no, no. Grab ice cream. Habita explicitly told me not to do this, you think to yourself, as you reach for a pint of banana chocolate chunk. No, no. Eat it. You'll be really mad if she finds out. Your conscience warns you as you take a scoop straight from the pint and shove it into your mouth. Before you know it, half the container is empty. Put the container back in shape! Oh, God! Eat the rest and bury the container in the bottom of the trash. Honestly, eating half of it and putting back the, the other half is even worse than just eating it all and trying to get rid of the evidence. So we are going to put it back, put the container back without shame. <laughs> there is no one doing what you've done. Tabitha will find this. She will know you did it and there will be consequences. Honestly, the only consequence I, I ever encountered was uh, she wanting me to pay for the, for the ice cream. So I, I am willing to take that consequence on me. You shamefully return the pint, of, uh, the pint to its place on the shelf. Close it. Yeah, sure. Yes. Search. No, search the pantry. Tabitha sure loves her mac and cheese. Yeah, all the mac and cheese. Take bread. You pick up one of the non moldy loaves of bread. Great, one step closer to satisfying snack. Oh yeah, all this, oh, all this moldy bread, ew. All you need now is a plate, a knife, and some peanut butter. And, 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 now listen. If you have keen eye, then you are able to read this book here. This, under the moldy loaf of bread. But we don't have that, so we can't read it right now. But we can see it, which I think is pretty cool. Like, it's there, but, but you can't grab it. Uh, take peanut butter, sure. The king of nut butters. And only 3% of each jar is mashed up cockroaches. Om um, nom nom. The only things you need now are a plate and a knife. Examine my kitchen. You pick up a box of Tabitha's mac and cheese. You can't say you've ever seen the brand before. No, 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 we don't want to cook it. Uh, although, although, I, uh, one, one of my previous runs, I've done this one. I put the dead mouse, that, that, that mouse into the box. And we never even talked about it anymore. Like it wasn't a thing. Like, I don't know if Tabitha hasn't realized it yet. But until the end of chapter four, she... She haven't ever mentioned it, you know? So, should we try it? I mean, I want to be on good terms with her. So I don't really want to mess with he, her mac and cheese. Maybe on another run? But we will, we will definitely try either cooking it. Should we cook it for ourselves? I told you we are going to eat everything. I've never done it before, honestly. Should we cook it for ourselves? Oh. Oh. Cook it. Your hunger is satisfied, but you can't help but wonder what consequences might await you in the future. Staying away from the mac and cheese was one of your cousin's hard rules, and she already seems to not like you. Yeah. But I wanted to eat everything. So, you know, I'm a hungry little cat. That's a problem for future you, though. Oh, I can't wait to see if this has any consequences, honestly. I'm, I'm hyped, hyped right now about this. I'm, I'm so curious. Uh, search the cabinet. This cabinet must be where Tabitha keeps the dishware and, oddly enough, the utensils. Grab a plate and a butter knife. This is the last ingredient you need to make your PBG. Time to get to work. No, no, no. Grab a bowl. You reach for the bowl, but as you pull it down, a blend of vinegar and dead moth splashes onto you, immediately staining your shirt. On the back of the bowl is a note that reads, Moth strap, do not touch. Oops! <laughs> <laughs> your shirt is now unpleasantly wet. We'll probably change into something clean before you leave the house. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. We are hot. Okay. We can go out there in a wet shirt and show out. You know our hotness to 
to say so. <laughs> uh, examine the map, sure. It reads, I was blown away at Blowing Rock and Sea. So your aunt and cousin actually travel at some time, even if it was only a few hours from the estate. Maybe you can route your return trip through B Blowing Rock. It might be nice to see the local sites before heading home. Have that, sure. It reads, I survived Deb's 50th. Your aunt's name was Perlance, so it, this wasn't from her 50th. From the few stories you heard from your mom, Pernan wasn't the type to have Kichi, Kichi, I don't know how to pronounce it. Friends who gave out team shot glasses at their birthday parties. Close the cabinet, sure. Mm. Oh yeah, check out the garden. Yes, yes, yes. This garden was reclaimed by the wilderness long ago. It might not be very safe, but who's to stop you from entering deeper? Take it in. This is the glass house where we are going to find the gold. Uh, this stair leads to the Scarlet uh, family, how you call it? Graveyard. We have, we have our own graveyard, apparently. Oh! This is, this, this, this is, is this Dusty Mom? I've never seen her before. How did I never seen her before? Hi, Dusty Mom. Hi. Hi. Oh, you're very cute. Oh, baby. Oh, I love you. Okay. Explore it. You wander further into the garden. It's quiet out here. Okay, take it in from this side as well. So this is the, the graveyard I mentioned earlier and I think that our room is somewhere about here covered by the tree because I think we're going to find the uh, veins footsteps somewhere about here where we are right now. Return, sure. You head back inside and close the door behind you, yes. Make the CBG, sure. Even though you already did and God knows what from the fridge, your ravenous form quickly sets to work making a PBG. You haven't mentioned the ice cream and the mac and cheese. I would like you to also notice that I ate those as well. A job well done! All of that hassle and it took you less than a minute to eat. The rest of the day lies in front of you. Thank you very much. Yeah, you are done here. Congratulations! You've eaten and have a full day ahead of you. What do you want to do next? Uh, sit down into my room. Yes, yes, yes. Now that you're, you've finally eaten, the aches and pains of your journey have started to sink deep into your bones. You stumble up the stairs to your room, suitcase in town, eager to unwin before you face the rest of the day. You stand at the entrance to your room. This is our room. It's old and pretty. And this is Maribel. And uh, here, here, here is where Dustin lives. We are going to meet him. Oh, look at the tiny box. Oh my God, it's a box family. How cute they are. <laughs> okay. Uh, take a No, no, <laughs> no, fucking no. Okay, okay. Just so you know, just so you know it. I personally cannot take naps during the day. I, I'm just not able to do it. I don't know why. If the sun is up, I can sleep. That's that's a fact. But also, but also, I I hate the fact of of taking naps. You know, just uh, just why would you do that exactly? I mean, night the night is for sleeping, for for resting. You know, and daytime is to be productive and uh, what part exactly is productive about taking a nap y you understand right so no i do not like taking naps i'm also not able to take naps and uh, and, and i really don't like when people take naps so yeah we are not doing that look at the window 
You can only imagine how beautiful the garden must have been in its heyday. If you own this place, you would totally get out there with a shovel and some gardening gloves and whip it into shape. Well, honestly, I'm not, I'm not big on gardening. My mother loves gardening and she has an amazing garden. And also her bedroom is kind of looks like a garden. Like she, she has a lot of uh, plants, plants in her bedroom. But not me, no, no, not me. And she's very sweet. She always brings me different kind of plants. Because, you know, I don't know. I think that's how she's uh, showing her love. But I'm so very bad with plants. I can't, I can't keep them alive. Like, they are, they are dead in a week. And I don't know why. They, they get, they get uh, sunlight. They get water. They, they have a nice, nice place, you know, that they can stay and, and thrive, I guess. But no, they are, they are dead in a week, like dead immediately. So yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Because I, if I go out there, this garden would be dead in no time. You would go out and pull weeds, chop, chop, chop trees? Why on the earth would you chop trees? That is not part of gardening. Carve topiaries and do whatever you need it to do to return it to its former glory. It's pretty as it is. I like these wild kind of gardens, honestly. And once it was all done, you would sit by the fountain, which of course would have a little goldfish in it, and drink a floral tea while enjoying the bird song. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's right about the tea. I very much like tea. Yeah, you would definitely do that. Just not right now. Can we see? Oh, we can't see Dusty Mom anymore. She went home to the greenhouse, little baby. Ooh. Is someone painting on the wall? This must be another relative of yours, judging by the dates on the inscription. You've never heard of her, but you'd barely heard anything about your aunt and cousin until a week ago, so that's not really a surprise. Maybe you could ask Tabitha about this Mary Bell Scarlet the next time you see her. That is, if she's actually in the, actually in the mood for conversation. Mm, check the closet. You can see why your cousin said you should put your closet in the dresser instead of this closet. Oh, your clothes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Why? Why you should? Put your clothes in the dresser instead of this closet. There must be decades of family history stacked up in here. There you go. Take a look. Pick up the doll, sure. Of course you're sharing a room with a creepy doll. You pick it up to examine it more closely. It's foot reads, property of Alexandra. No need to carry this around with you. Yeah. <gasps> oh! Cheat! I've never noticed it before, but if, if you pick up the doll, you can also see it in the background. It remains there, and it's creepy and funny at the same time, honestly. Uh, you close the closet behind you. Put your spare clothes in the dresser. Hey, Dusty! Hey! I just met your mama! Did you know that? I just met your mama! You drag your suitcase over to the dresser and open the bottom drawer. And a possum lurks within. It is quiet, but angry. Offer, <laughs> offer your boy peanuts. Now, I know, I know I told you we are going to offer the peanuts to everyone. But, but if you offer the peanuts to Dustin Bebe, he, he is going to play dead because, because he is afraid of your peanuts. So we are not doing that. We, we're gonna put, put, put the clothes on top of him because he likes that. The poor thing looks cold in there, you think to yourself. Look at him, look at him go. Oh, baby. You lay your clothes on top of the creature, arranging them in a little nest. It closes its mouth somewhat more at ease than before and looks up at you with its shiny black eyes. Look at him. Dustin home became cozy. Okay. You close the drawer, satisfied with yourself for a well, for a job well done. I am, I am, I am, I am. <laughs> I am, I am satisfied. Thank you very much. 
We're not taking a nap. Leave me be. That's enough. It doesn't seem like there's much else for you to do here right now. Might as well head to town. Now that you're settled in, there is not much left for you to do here other than head out and explore the town. You do just that. Before leaving the house, you rinse off and change into a clear shirt. No! No! I didn't want it to. I wanted to show off my, my, my wet titties. Oh, You're not about to meet new people caught in vinegar then most, but I wanted to. Oh. If you'd have known you'd wind up having to walk all the way back to town, we probably would have just asked Tabitha to leave you at the bus stop, especially with how unhappy she seemed to see you. If only you could wipe the slate between the two of you clean and bury some of the tension. Though maybe her mother's funeral isn't the best time for something like that. Then again, maybe it's the perfect time. Continue. It's really pretty out here, but your serenity is quickly overcome by a sudden urge to puke. The slime wants out. <laughs> also, look at it. It's really pretty. Yeah. The mountains and the birdies and all. Okay, so puke. Uh, or sit down. Or sit down. You're not going to let this slime get the best of you, you think to yourself as you muster up every last ounce of willpower and force it back into your guts. You're safe for now, but the rest... No, but there is no telling how long it will last. I know exactly how long it will last. Finally, you made it back to town. Look at the town. It's uh, small, and uh, here is the town hall. Well, it's it's a library now, but, but it was a town hall. Here is the general store. This is where uh, Kanika and uh, her mother Sibyl lives and her, her little brother as well, who, who I don't know the name of. And maybe this is the diner. I'm not 100% sure about it, but this is my guess. My guess is that this is the diner. The holler, as that guy on the bus called it, has probably seen better days. It still has the feeling of an Italy country town, but its sidewalks are cracked and many of the storefronts are boarded up, their windows dusty with age. A chill breeze sweeps down the lane and you shudder, suddenly feeling as if you're peering into a grave. Gretchen! Hi, little baby! Gretchen, come back! Quit bothering strangers! Oh, I, I haven't seen you around here before. Hot. The young woman is noticeably flustered by your appearance. It's a phenomenon that you, as a hot, are all too familiar with. Sorry about Gretchen. She can be very slippery when she wants to be. Hope she didn't scare you. Nah. The excitement of meeting this new stranger causes you so much to charm. Once more, the slime is making its escape. What's it about? I can do this all day, you think to yourself, as you struggle once more to force the slime back into your stomach. You succeed, but you don't think you will manage to pull this off again. We don't have to. We don't have to pull this off again. Hey, are you okay? You don't look so great. Uh, a bit of a stomach ache. My guts are in my body. No, no, no. I'm okay. Yes, yeah, sorry. It, I just did something earlier. Didn't agree with me. Well, you can say it like that, but you know very well that it was your mistake. Well, my mistake. Uh, my, it was my mistake. Oops. <laughs> oh, we've all been there. I hope you will feel better soon. I can look away. No, no, no. You are going to look right at me when it happens. Anyways, I'm Stella. Nice to meet you. Hi, Stella. It's not often I see a strange face up in the holler. Every now and then there is a new crop of clothes, but you don't look dusty enough for that. Oh, the blush. You aren't in time for the funeral, are you? The Scarlet funeral? Oh, <laughs> yes. I want to offer. Okay, okay, wait, wait. Let me, let me, let me give you, let me give you a... A quick note on this. I know it's a very unpopular opinion, but uh, I don't really like Stella. 
I mean, I understand her trauma. I understand why she's the way as she is. But I just really don't like her. So we are gonna be nice to her because of course I understand why is she the way she is. But I just don't like her. So yeah, that's, that's all, that's all. And also, I know, I know, I know you are going to be angry. Okay, I know. But also, I don't, I don't really like Gretchen either. I mean, when she is not talking, she is completely fine. But if you have talked to animals, she is just so annoying. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She is a cute dog. And I love her very much. I like I like dogs in general. Before you try to throw me into a river, but uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's it. Don't hate me, please. Don't hate me. I know, I know. These are not the best things to start off my very first video with, but that's how it is. <laughs> I want to offer the peanut. <laughs> you hold out the dripping bag of peanuts. It's polite to offer food in your social situations. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Oh, that's really kind of you to offer, but I couldn't take your food. You should hang on to those in case you get <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Stella. Anyways, I'm gonna go out in a limb and say that you are Tabby's cousin, right? That's the only person I can think of who would come to town for the funeral. How is she holding up? To be honest, I've been a little worried about her, all alone up in that big house. Uh, oh, mystical. She's in conflict with herself. Whoever I met today isn't the real Tabitha. I hope you mean that metaphorically. To tell you the truth, she's always been a little rough around the edges, but most people don't really catch on to that. It will probably be good for her now that you're staying there, even if she doesn't think so herself. Uh, how long have you known her? Oh, quite a long time. The town is really small, so everybody knows everybody else as far back as they can remember. Tabby and I got a little close when we were both in the school's production of A Midsummer Night's Dream. I was Puck and she was Mustard Seed. As you might have expected, she was more than a little prickly, but I managed to soften her up a bit in the end. But then she graduated and that was that. Oh, if you just got to town, you must be starving. But I have the peanuts. You told me to keep it in case I would like to eat something. I have the peanuts, my girl. I was just on my way to the diner for a coffee and they've got amazing biscuits. My treat. But what about, what about my peanut? Follow her, sure. Hey! Okay, wait, 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 wait. The diner! I like this place, honestly. I very much like the diner. Not only because I, uh, I, I, like, I, like, I like to eat here. No, no, not only because of that. But we can see a lot of person here who we are going to meet later on the game. For example, Little Tulip. And this is Janie. And here are the miners that I'm so sorry, but I don't I don't know the name of them. I I know that I said I played this game many many times before, but what I haven't mentioned yet is that I'm very bad with names, like very 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 bad with names. So just just so you can have a perspective on that, I had a friend, and for a year I didn't even know what was his real name because I always called him on, on his nickname so I I and I never even wondered what might be his name because I wasn't interested I don't really care about names honestly so yeah yeah I'm sorry I don't I don't remember much much of much of their names but uh, we're gonna find out eventually right so I remember Avery of course and uh, Julius, maybe the pumpkin guy, the cops. Uh, Ever is some relative that I don't know the name of, and uh, and cook cook guy. I have no idea. I don't think we ever learned his name. 
Okay, and we have Oh, Winnie is winning smile for free. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, your name is Winnie, like the poo, yeah? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm very bad with names. Okay. We have fancy city coffee. Sausage biscuit special. Is this, is this the biscuit? I always imagined it as, as a sweet biscuit, but it, it has sausage. Is it the biscuit? Sunday pancake special. I like, I love, I love pancake. I would love, I would love pancake. I hope we can have pancake on Sunday. And bottomless coffee, which is cheaper <laughs> than the fancy city coffee. All right, okay, that's enough. Uh, the pleasant aroma of greasy breakfast food hangs heavy in the air. In contrast with the empty, lifeless atmosphere of the family estate, the diner is filled with the comforting of human life. All of which grinds to a sudden heart as the patrons realize that a stranger has entered the establishment. Aww. With all eyes on you, your stomach starts to churn. Again. The slime refuses to be contained. You've held it back too long, and it yearns to be free with a force more powerful than your comprehension. As it barrels through your es esophagus, you spot a small trash can. Is this the trash can? You aim for it as best you can before the slime erupts from your mouth. It made it in, but much of your vomit and pile is still splattered across the entryway of the diner, all while every pair of eyes in the place was on you. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Also, also, look, the faces. I just, I just love the faces. Pure little tulip. I think, I think we scarred her for life. Also, I don't know your name, but I love this face. What's this face? I love it. And the best is the cool guy. The cool guy is just, he has it all. He is angry. He is disgusted. He disappointed. He has it all. I love his face. Oh. As someone rushes out of the kitchen with a mop and bucket, Stella hurries you to a booth. <laughs> hey everyone, this is Tabitha's cousin. She's here for the funeral and I guess she's not feeling very well. Looks like her entrance was probably a little more dramatic than you were expecting, huh? No, no, it was exactly how I expected it. And now we wait, we wait for the aftermath. Are you feeling okay? Do you need anything? No, 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 I'm fine. Most humiliating, no. No, just a little food poisoning. Oh. I ate something earlier that didn't quite agree with me. You're lying again. I'm a liar. And they decided now was when it wanted to make its grand escape. You're lying again. It wanted to come out two times already. Why am I a liar? I don't want to be a liar. Oh, we've all been there. I hope you feel better after letting it all out. And don't worry about the mess. Robbie is a pro, he's seen worse. Robbie is the cook guy, because then we've learned the name of the cook guy. I, I just didn't remember. Well, maybe. Whatever you ate does smell really bad. Hey stranger, hope you're feeling better. Hi Avery! And Stella, I already went ahead and fixed you up a coffee. They gracefully put a cup of specially brewed coffee on the table in front of Stella. I know, I know it will sound strange, but I also haven't noticed that he has a little piercings in his lips. I, I don't know, man. I'm not, I'm not very observant, okay? Oh, shucks. Thanks, Avery. And here is some bacon for the little lady. Gretchen sniffs the bacon and digs in. You can hit the H button. Yeah, I, I know that already. Look, look at her, Gretchen with her bacon. <laughs> Poor Pug, you're so old. Ah, anything for you, darling? Oh yeah, because, because we are hot, you see, we are hot. But who cares that we 
spewed all over the diner because we are hot. We are hot and we can puke wherever we want. We are still going to be called Tarlin and get winged at because we are so hot. Oh! <laughs> offer, offer the peanuts! I want to offer the peanuts! You hold out the spear dripping bag of boys. <laughs> Gretchen sniffs at the splatters of brine on the table and licks her lip, lips expectantly. Oh, you want the peanuts, baby? N no thanks. I shouldn't take gifts while I'm on my ship. You are all so nice, honestly, honestly. Oh, you are taking it so well. Anything, anything I can get you though? Uh, isn't bacon bad for dogs? Honestly, I mean it's not my dog. And who who am I? Who am I to take away the pleasure? Stella said she's buying. <laughs> no no no. Uh, order a biscuit and a coffee because we have to eat everything. Could I have a biscuit and coffee, please? I heard they were really good. Best in the county. Ever pours the fragrant brew into the empty mug in front of you. They linger after pouring your coffee, turning to you nervously. Oh, and I'm uh, sorry for your loss. Before you have the chance to respond, they are gone. <gasps> Look at the background. Already with the gossip. The pukey is starting to form right here. <laughs> oh. Glad you took my advice with the biscuit. You won't regret it. You know, if you ever want to get rid of those peanuts, there, there is always that trash can by the door! How dare you! How dare you! Stella, Stella, these are my peanuts and I'm going to offer them to everyone. Though maybe you will want to wait for Robbie to clean it up first. Robbie has to be the chef, right? Anyways, the funeral is not till Sunday, right? That gives you quite a bit of time to slum around town. I'm trying to think if there are any cool events going on this week. There is always a reading adventure at the library, which is supposed to be for little kids, but I do it every month anyway. Oh, and I'm pretty sure Eor is throwing a party Saturday night, so that's a fun thing to look forward to. I would like to party with Avery, honestly. And there is the weekly Sunday potluck. I don't even know what a potluck is, but sure, I'm, I mean, fine. That should be right after the funeral too, so it will be a special occasion. But what is a potluck? Is a potluck like a church thing? I don't know, man. Is that? Would it be weird for me to come if I'm not a member? No, no, the Sunday thing is coincidental. It's actually hosted by the library. Uh, not too many people go to church around here, if I'm being honest. A non-religious community in the rural south? I get that, that's a shame. Hey, yeah, religions, fuck. Okay, I'm, I'm an atheist, so I, 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 that, I don't know if that's how I pronounce it. Atheist? A, 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 that, that, you know what I mean. So yeah, but uh, a very strict principle of mine is that you never mock anyone because of the religion because it's it's everyone has their free will to believe in whatever they want and if i choose not to believe in anything that that is my choice and everyone has their own choice to decide what or who they believe in so we are not saying that uh, a non-religious community in the rural south that's gonna be unusual. I know, I know. We must seem like such heathen. I also don't know what that means. But there are plenty of gut fearing folks in town. They just aren't the biggest fans of the local church. Well, the building is okay, but the pastor's another story. There is just something a little off about the guy. You will get what I mean if you ever meet him. And unfortunately, you probably will. Anyway, those are all the big events I can think of. As for the day-to-day, -day, any idea how you want to kill time for the rest of the week? What's it to you? Um, okay, okay. The other thing is, 
the time I'm super introverted. Like, uh, if I would be in this situation, and uh, uh, so imagine that you as an introverted person have to go to a, an isolated little town, which is good, okay? Isolated little town is good. And you have this huge estate where you could stay all on your own, which is like a dream coming true. But let's say you went to town, okay? Because, I don't know, you, you wanted to discover the area, which is also fine. I would do that because I, I like uh, pretty scenery and all. But then you meet this stranger who wants you to go with her at night to the woods to chase monsters. The monster chasing part is fine, honestly, but I, would, I wouldn't do that with a stranger. I wouldn't even go to a diner with a stranger. Like, okay, if we just met and we are going to the same direction, it's awkward, but it's fine. But staying with her, talking with her, going to the woods with her, that's an no go no no way i would do that but i fully understand that the story has to start somewhere and you have to get into the storyline somehow although although and it is a uh, very good news for for all the introverts like me i think that uh, abby the developer of this game abby has told that uh, she was thinking about adding a second route to the to the first chapter where you would have the choice not to go with Stella and there would be another way how you could end up in this whole ditchling situation but she also thought that it's not a hundred percent that she will do it and if she will she will only do it after all seven chapters have been released so we have to wait for it and uh, I, I very much hope that it is going to be a thing. So... I'm sure I'll be able to occupy myself or I'll probably just do what I can to support a bit of through this. We are going to do with the support. I kind of assumed I'd be spending my time trying to help Tabitha, but with how quickly she ran off today, I'm not sure that's enough for a full schedule. That's not what you, that's not what you wrote down here. That's not, that's not at all, that's not at all what I wanted to say, <laughs> that's fine. That's really sweet of you, but you're right. That will definitely still leave you with plenty of time to kill. Have you thought about exploring the local trays at all? Honestly, I would do that, but I would rather do it alone. Because that's so much safer, I know, I know, not because of that, but because of the fact that I don't have to be with other human beings. I'm usually out, of, out there a few nights a week for my job and I'd be happy to show you around. Before Stella can finish, Avery returns biscuit in tow. I don't need the sausage. Is this the sausage biscuit or the special very tasty biscuit is a sweet biscuit? I have to know. Here is your biscuit. Minnie says it's on the house. She sends her condolences. I, I, I very much appreciate it, but tell me please. Where is the biscuit? I mean, here is the edge of the table, right? This is the table. And where is the biscuit? Where have you put it? You put it in my lap, Avery? You put it in my hot lap? Have you? Never mind. Thanks, you didn't have to. Oh, you didn't have to do that. It looks great. No worries, hope you enjoy it. Mystica. You pick up the biscuit. It's delicate and fluffy. It nearly crumbles at your touch. Buttery warmth emanates from its surface. You don't even need to taste it to know that it is good. Divinity given buttery form. You take a bite. It melts in your mouth as if it was nothing but butter suspended in a thin matrix of dough. Truly, this is a perfect biscuit. Wow, <laughs> let's just say, wow, this is a really good biscuit, wow, I'm so glad you like it. Avery lingers at the table for a moment. 
So, as Stella mentioned, she's famous. <laughs> oh, Avery, I'm not famous. Look, if you are not going to go around tooting your own horn, you know I'm going to do it for you. Stella sighed. I'm a YouTuber. Oh, what? Wait, what? What kind of videos do you do? Whoa, that's red. Oh, okay. How does that make you money? That. That I want to know. Stella, please tell me. Oh, you and everyone else. No, 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 no. Uh, what kind of videos do you do? Cool, what kind of videos do you do? Yes. She hunts cryptids. You should really check out her channel, Mortis. It's amazing. And you should also check out my channel because it's amazing. I think the best video to start with would be that river one. Not the lake, but you know, the controversial one. Oh yeah, the Kataba River Runner. I didn't expect much out of that footage at the time, but it wound up being my most popular video by far. So the River Runner is a cryptid that's only known from a single sighting. Two Boy Scouts thought they saw something big and weird in the Kataba River, and that's all I had. Uh, and that's all I had to go on. But then I wound up catching this on camera. Stella pulls out her phone and shows you a clip of something in a river. Okay, wait. I wanna. I want to read this. Kataba River Runner. Okay. Haunted ice cream parlor. Maybe I don't know. Teared in the woods free. And oh, music. This to chill slash study. Okay. I gotcha. Some folks said it was a beaver. But if that was the case, it would be at least twice the size of any beaver I've seen. It, 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 could be, it could be a fat beaver, Stella. It always can be a fat beaver. I also had people saying it was a dog or even a capybara that must have escaped from a local wildlife sanctuary. I'm still not sure what it was. And I'm the one who saw the thing with my own two eyes. Hmm... Leave it alone. No, I don't believe in cryptids. No. Oh yeah, totally. A dog. Or wait. A beaver. Hold on. <laughs> what is that? Right. My comment section went nuts with this footage. And from there it spread to Twitter pretty flat. Pretty fast. There were polls for days. I even had actual experts weighing in. It was all a really cool experience. And it meant the video did some pretty great numbers. Personally, I'm a fan of the capybara theory. Sure, it's not like any local sanctuaries were missing one, but there's always people keeping exotic animals as pets. That's true. Kind of a sewer getter, getter type situation. Aha, <laughs> exactly. Some exotic pet owner set it free, and now it will forever roam the Kataba confusing Boy Scouts and YouTube commenters for years to come. So, speaking of things to do around town, I was actually planning on filming this week's video tonight. I was wondering if maybe you would want to come along? It's a pretty easy one this week. We wouldn't even have to camp anywhere. I'm gonna go after the... Wait, no spoilers! Oops, sorry Avery. It's okay, I should probably get back to it instead of standing around chatting with friends. See you all around. See ya! Now that the coast is clear, I'm going after Skunk Ape. Ew, stinky! Skunk Ape, heck yeah. Isn't that just worse Bigfoot? <laughs> it's definitely one of the lesser ape type cryptids and one of the smellier according to some sources. They say you should be able to smell it before you see it. I don't know about you, but I find the idea of discovering something previously unknown to be excitement enough, even if it's just worse Bigfoot. Most skunk ape sightings are from Florida, or Florida, but while I was doing research for last week's video, I came across a report where a lady from a town over claimed to have seen one on her deck playing tug of war with her dog. Stella, Stella my dear, have anyone ever told you? Not to believe everything you see on the internet. Just, just saying, you shouldn't. 
and as I leave no stone unturned, I decided it was worth investigating. Why? Why? Exactly? Would you? Okay. So what do you say? Wanna tag along? No, not really, but I have no choice. Hold the camera for me while I narrate against the darkening sky, that sort of thing. Isn't it? It's not. It's not. It's not. We could, honestly, we could flirt with everyone. And uh, I had a run when I did flirt with everyone. And they got so, like, offended and angry with me when, when they found out that I, I'm like that. I'm flirting with, with everyone. So, will Gretchen be there? Against my better judgment, yes. Are you not? It's not like I have anything else going on. No. That depends. Will Gretchen be there? Of course. It's actually been a while since I've had anyone but Gretchen out there with me. Say no more. I mean. This is going to be a lot of fun. I actually started the channel with a couple of buddies uh, of mine back in middle school. So it will kind of be like a blast from the past. Me and Kanika and Reese running around in the woods, flipping over rocks and bothering salamanders. Our rhythm was were terrible, but we had a lot of fun and that's all that mattered to us. And that is what should matter. You know, that gets me thinking. I wonder if they'd be down to come along with us, get the, get the old gang back together. Though I guess Kanika has to close out the general store tonight, so I'm pretty sure she's a no-go. But Reed, I think there is a decent chance we could get him to come out of his hidey hole if he's up for it. Do you mind if I make a quick call? No, no. I would like to be able to call Reed. I'm just telling you. You can call him, but I would like to be able to do that. Stella pulls out her phone and dials it, waiting while it rings. Reed, dude, what's up? Feel like it's been forever. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. Do you want me to come by or... Oh. Okay, if you're really sure. But if you change your mind... Oh, I was just calling to ask if you wanted to come out to the woods tonight. I met somebody cool in town today. She studied as cousin. I know, yeah, just here for the week. Anyway, we are going out to look for skunky. We could take the easier trails if that would help. Dang, man. That sounds awful. I hope you take it easy tonight. I'll swing by sometime this week and we can have a more low-key hang. How's that? <laughs> yeah, I'll bring her. Talk to you soon. Bye, bud. Aww. Looks like it's just you and me, pal. Did he ask you to bring me to his house? Why? He's excited to meet you, of course. I think you will find most folks in town are. Is he okay? He's not feeling well, that's all. He's had a lot going on in the past. Gosh, 10 years or so. But I feel like he's gotten a lot worse recently. I can't remember the last time I saw him leave his house. Oh well, it's not my place to talk about, really. I just get a little excited thinking about having him along again. He's hilarious, you would love him. I love him already. We should swing by his place sometime this week. Yeah, 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 totally. That would be nice. I'd love to meet your friend. In fact, I would, because I love Reese. I love Kanika. Avery is fine. I wouldn't say I love him, but yeah, he, he's fine. I like him. He's a fun guy. Awesome. I'll make it happen. He's definitely the trickier one to meet. Kanika is much easier to track down since she's at the general store basically every day. But friendship can wait. We've got a skunk cape to hunt. So we should probably head out if we want to make it up the mountain before it's too dark. Come on, let's blow this popsicle stand. You pause, for, you pause before getting up. Maybe it's time to make a good second impression. After all, <laughs> you just puked your guts out in front of half the town. We did. We did it. On purpose. Uh, 
Yeah, leave a generous tip. You reach into your fucking pool out a crumpled $5 bill. You know it's a bit more than one would expect to get from such a short dining experience, but you might as well share the wealth while you've got it. You smooth out the bill before placing it on the table inconspicuously, maybe? Oh, that's awesome of you. Every will appreciate that, I'm sure. Stella turns to leave the diner with you following close behind. It hadn't been very cold when you first arrived in town, but as the sun dips closer and closer to the horizon, a chill descends upon the hollow, and you see your situation with renewed clarity. You're in a new place, far from civilization, and the people you know, following someone you just met into a dark forest in search of monsters. That is exactly what I was talking about. That's why you are not following strangers around in small towns where anyone can be a murderer and just a stranger in general. Don't like strangers. Also, take it in. Is it pretty? Isn't it? Look at it. This is, up here, is the clinic when Reese and uh, his mother lives. Uh, this is the town hall. I highly suspect that this is the diner, because someone near the diner, Avery, has his little garden, and I'm going to assume that this is the garden. And maybe this is the bus stop, it looks like a bus stop. And I assume this is uh, Stella's house, because they say it's uh, on the edge of the, the village. And way over here, this is the estate. And you can even see the graveyard. We have a pretty big graveyard. And here is the church where Tulip, Janie, and the creepy pastor, maybe Daniel, I, I'm not sure about the name, where, where they live with the alpacas. Yeah, that's all. And I can't wait to discover every corner of this place. I feel, how do I feel? Mystical, of course I feel mystical. A sense of foreboding. You feel an overwhelming sense of foreboding, which seems only natural considering where you are. Your instinct screams at you to leave, but at the same time, you're furious to see what the night has in store for you. You decide to go with the flow, to keep putting one foot in front of the other and not to dwell too much on this strange feeling. Got to love this brisk fall weather. This past summer was the hottest on record, since last year at least. You know how it is these days. Each summer is the hottest yet until the next summer, which always finds a way to be so much worse. This? You want to talk about weather with a stranger on a monster hunt in the woods? You are suspicious. It's just, nice to, it's just nice to feel a chill in the air and see the leaves change. Like normalcy is restored, if only for a moment. Sorry if that was a bit of a bummer. We should talk about something more fun, like skunk ape. Yeah, yeah, we should. Oh, Bebe, you're so... What, you have a little vest? Or is that, or is that part of your harness? If, because that's part of your harness. I don't know how you wriggle out of it. You are talented, little bug. Hmm... What's the weirdest thing you've seen out here, other than cryptids? Other than cryptid related, of course. Oh gosh, that's a good one! Let me think. Well, there is always the deer I saw stealing baby birds out of a nest and eating them. That was pretty... Yeah, yeah, that is pretty messed up. What? Does deer do that? But I think most people know about that these days. I've seen tons of videos of other deer doing it. So I'm not sure if it counts as weird anymore. It does. I, 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 I didn't know about this. I haven't even heard of it. I mean, I know that, that uh, when deer are, are shedding their antlers, it's very creepy. Like, you should look it up. It looks, well, gross and cool at the same time. I always thought, when I was younger, that they are just... Th that the old antlers are just falling down and the new one just grows out and the new one is going to be bigger. I don't know why I thought that, honestly, it makes no sense. But 
what actually happens is that they have a coat on their antlers and this coat is kind of this 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 furry thing and it's 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 flesh it's it's basically it's basically covered in flesh and they rub it against trees and and it's it's bleeding it's coming off and it's it's bleeding and pieces falling off and it's terrible it, it's just terrible but i love it <laughs> it it's so it <laughs> it looks so bad it's cool okay Oh, tetanus lake! That's definitely the weirdest. It's a 5 foot deep, 30 foot wide pile of old cans and bottles and assorted garbage with grass and trees growing on it so you could barely tell it was there until you stepped on it. That's more like dangerous than, than cool, but weird. Okay, sure, it's weird, of course. It was practically solid ground with how much it had been compressed, but you could still fall through if you weren't careful, hence the name. I mean, sure, I would like to check it out, though. If something, I would like to check that out. I hope we are going to go there in Chapter 5 or something, because in Chapter 4, we can talk to Little Tulip, and it turns out she goes to Tetanus Lake to play with the rats, so... Better be up on your shots if you want to mess around there. I want to mess around there. It's all stuff from the 50s. Too, which is super neat. I salvaged a few bottles that I keep on my dresser as a little souvenir. You know we are going to check that out when we are going to look for you. <laughs> Just say it. Are you really expecting to find anything? What are the chances we actually run into a skank cape in just one night of filming? That's a good question. That's fair. We are hunting a creature that stayed hidden from humans long enough to gain a mythic reputation. What are the odds of something like that popping out to star on my little YouTube channel? That's exactly what I asked. But hey, the chances are never zero, right? I mean, it's right as well. Uh, do you ever hunt anything that aren't cryptids, like ghosts and whatnot? You know, like ghosts, demons, werewolves, that sort of thing? Yeah, for sure. I used to go after all sorts of spooky stuff. I never had much luck though, especially when it came to ghosts. Back when I first started doing solo videos, I would go into all sorts of old abandoned buildings, hoping I would stumble across some sort of activity. Oh, if you would know Stella, we will find you some activity. But nothing ever happened. It was always just me and my camera in an old house getting worked up over a gust of wind or a creak floorboard. When all is said and done, I've just been a lot luckier with cryptids. I want to believe in ghosts so bad, and I can't rule out the possibility that there really are true hauntings out there. But if there are, I sure as heck haven't seen any myself. Where was? I kind of flump in with uh, cryptids. I would show if there actually were people out there who turned into animals, but the werewolf lore lines up pretty well with the great beast genre of cryptids. As for demons, I don't know, I honestly don't even want to consider the possibility that they exist, because if they really are out there, jeez, a lot of folks are doomed to an eternity of flames. I mean, you don't know yet, but they are real, they are real and they made one of your bestie, just saying. So let's hope all of that's junk bank, am I right? No, 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 no. We want demons to be real, and we know that demons are real. And we will <clears throat> get stuck in a closet with one of them, to put it nicely. What about aliens? What do you think about aliens? Don't even get me started. Did you see the UFO videos the government declassified? Aliens are definitely real and they have absolutely visited Earth. Like, I believe in aliens way more than I believe in cryptids. You don't see me hunting aliens out here because we know they are real. We are not alone out here, but everything is cut from the same cloth. Whoa, <laughs> you've got to meet my friend Kanika's mom. You two would get along. Honestly, I don't really trust uh, Sibyl, Kaneka's mom. 
she seems like we know that she tries to help us, but at the same time, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about her. Has anything bad ever happened on these hikes? You know, just curious. Mm, let me think. There was that time back in early high school when Reese fell down the cliff. But he was fine. We had some folks from town rig up a pulley to get him out of the ravine, and his leg only took a couple of months to heal. I wonder why. All in all, not too bad. Though I guess there was also the time I was out here alone and kinda got stuck in a cave. I was getting great footage of what I thought was a family of wampus cats, but I wasn't able to wiggle my way back out. Turns out that the wampus cats were actually skanks who very much did not appreciate me blocking the entrance to their hidey hole. And instead of running for help, Gretchen just sat outside, bored to tears. Let's see, she is not. Took about an hour to get loose, which was pretty intense, but a few tomato juice baths later I was right as rain, so it could have been a lot worse. Yes, you could have died, but sure, it's not too bad. Oh, and there was time I accidentally stumbled onto old Duke's property and nearly got my head shut off. But it happens to everybody sooner or later, or I would barely count it. Yes, yeah, sure, to everybody. So yeah, these hikes aren't all that dangerous, all things considered. Did you hear that? Yes. Oh, calm down, Gretchen, you old moth. Looky, baby. But where did, where did the harness go? Same to you, Stella. You're always jumping at nothing or... Oh, sorry for getting spooked, Duke. I thought you were... Some creature of darkness? Nah, girly, just old Duke. Now, what the hell are you looking for way out here? Sorry, I asked. And who is this you've suckered into coming with you? Wait a tick, you aren't. Is that? Yep. I see. Welcome to the holler. My condolences. I'll keep you in my prayers. Thank you. Another stranger, another opportunity for a sort introduction. Yes, yes, yes. This is going to be our trademark. <gasps> I love it. Offer you your peanuts. You hold out the slippery bag in front of you. It grown quiet fragrance since you first put it in your rucksack. Like the scent of old beer. Oh, beer. But you're pretty sure that's what it's supposed to smell. <laughs> Yes, yes, I'm sure. Oh, I hope this bag of peanuts will save our lives at some point. I would like it to happen. Boy, peanuts? From your backpack? No, I'm all set, thank you. Now, both of you are head on back to town, you hear? It's best to steer well clear of this area tonight. I'm out dealing with my own critter and won't be too appreciative if a couple of fools with a camera scare away the more sensitive wildlife. What are you hunting tonight? Something tall and hairy? Something musky? You seen anything like that recently? Wouldn't you like to know? You never could stay in your business, Stella Richmond. Put that damn camera down. Oh, come on, Duke. Maybe I could help out. I'm pretty good at tracking. You know, I learned from the best. That you did. But I have yet to see a shred of proof that you listened to any of it. The way you tromp around the woods at night yelling about chunkabangas or what have you. Something's been getting at my chickens. I've lost three this week and can't afford to lose many more than that. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that I am. But uh, I wonder if Skunkape has a taste for chicken? Now see, this is why I don't come to you about these things. It ain't no skunk cape, whatever the hell that is. I know exactly what this is, but I know you won't believe me if I tell you. Oh, Duke, you don't think it is? I do, actually. It's those damn mountain lions. They are out there, Stella. I don't care what your little investigation turned up. You haven't been out in the woods as long as I have. The sons of bitches are, are sneaky. Of course you wouldn't find in any in one night of trekking. 
he has a point. And I know for a fact that's what's been getting at my chickens. It couldn't be anything else. I'm telling you, man, mountain lions are extinct in these parts. There hasn't been an actual sighting since the 1990s, and even those were iffy. I can't believe you got out there on your YouTube saying some river monsters spotted by a couple of school-aged boy scouts have been 100% confirmed, yet Appalachian cougars are some kind of far-fetched fantasy made up by geezers like me. Stella? Stella. Stella. It's not my place to take side in this conversation, as I'm an outsider, okay? But he has a point again! I mean, come on! You made me look like a fool! Ooh. I read those comments people were posting on your video. They were calling me all kinds of names just for seeing things with my own eyes that I know to be true. Stella? He's talking the same as you did just a few moments ago in the diner, so you know, you could be nicer to him. I'm sorry, Duke. I didn't mean to seek anybody on you. I just don't think it's plausible. Because Skunkip is! Girl! You'll eat those words when I come carrying the mountain lion corpse out of those woods at dawn. And if you two don't want to face full of buckshots, I should just I suggest you run home and stay out of the woods tonight. Mistaken love. As Duke's words leave his mouth, a sinking feeling starts to pull at your stomach, and you glimpse brief flashes of something terrible to come. Whatever it is, the four of you are bound to meet it, and it will change you forever. Mystic, uh, I don't think this night ends now. Something's waiting for us deeper in the woods. There is something waiting for us deeper in the woods. Yeah, I know, I'm hunting it. What if it's not a mountain lion though? What if it's... Oh, don't you get started again. If your daddy could hear you now, going on about ghouls and goblins, using what the, what he taught you to run around these woods like some kind of paranormal investigator. Do you want that to be his legacy, girl? And besides, you know my boy Bo and me are headed down to the state fair to show off Big Betty this week. Big Betty the pumpkin. We will begun days and the chicken coop might as well have a big all you can eat sign on it if we, do, uh, if we don't nip this in the butt tonight. You know how I feel about my chickens. I couldn't take it if I lost any, mo any more of my poor little ladies. And you know I have to put out a video by tomorrow evening. Why, why though? Living out just one day is, is such a big deal, just skipping one video? Mystical. As you can Stella dig their feet in, the feeling from before gains form and clarity. Somebody here is going to die tonight. If I miss an update, I might lose my new sponsor, and who knows what that will mean for my career. That's, that's how bad you are standing right now? Like, just losing one sponsor? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's how it goes. I don't know yet. Mystical. One of, us go one of us is going to die tonight. Now what's that supposed to mean? Are you trying to threaten me? Yes. I don't know. It's just a weird feeling. A weird bad feeling. Whoa. Are you psychic or something? Science point to yes. Whoa. What am I thinking right now? Oh, shh. Oh, hush. You ain't psychic. You're just trying to answer to me, so I let you all go off in the woods to film your little video. Um, Mortis, I think you freaked Duke out enough for one evening. Maybe we should leave the poor man to his white goose chase. I'm not freaked out by your friend's theatrics, but if it gets you out of my hair, sure, I'm greatly disturbed. That sounded so much like a uh, tab tabita right now. <laughs> Now run along home and stay out of trouble. As you and Stella return to the trail, she carefully looks back the way you came. Okay, the coast is clear. There's no way we are letting you edge us out that easy. You think the other way that Abby will may or may not will add 
is that you can actually turn around here and go back to town? I just wonder. Come on, I know a trail that will let us get around him. Oh, my man. Oh, no, we aren't actually headed back to town. But what about you? I don't know how comfortable I will be tromping through the woods knowing there is someone with a shotgun out there ready to blow my head off. Oh, you don't have to worry about our duke. I've been out trekking with him before. The man sounds like a truck crashing through the trees when he walks. Then why was he able to jump scare you just now, Stella? Why are you lying to me? Even if we do cross paths, we will hear him long before he catches the wind of us. But that's not true. He just jump scared you. There's no shaking you, is there? You will just follow me until I finally relent and go monster hunting with you. I promise it will be fun and safe and you're lying again. The trail is just up this way. Let's go. All right. This looks like a good shot. Mind holding the camera? She hands you the camera and takes position. Oh. Aham. As night falls, my new assistant, the gorgeous Mortis, and I find ourselves on a high hill in the Blue Ridge Mountains, where we will begin our hunt for the elusive yet pungent skunk ape. Though mostly encountered in Florida or Florida, this possible relative of Bigfoot has been spotted all along the southeastern edge of the United States, including right in this very county. Here's hoping we get a glimpse tonight. We will check back once we are on the trail. Until then, stay searching, Stellars! I can take the camera off your hands for now. We'll be able to start the tracking scenes once the sun sets all the way. I'm also just wondering, because obviously I haven't done this before, but aren't you, if, if you are filming videos like this, aren't you supposed to have a, a stand for your camera instead of asking strangers to hold it for you? I really, I'm just asking. I don't want to be rude or anything. I'm just curious, you know. In the meantime, we get to take in all of this gorgeous scenery, mystical. Duke may be gone, but the feeling in your gut still lingers. Something terrible awaits you. Something unavoidable. Though what exactly is wrong in these woods still eludes you. There is something wrong here. The view isn't the only gorgeous thing out there. No, 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 no. It feels oppressive, dark. Hmm, you don't happen to mean stinky, do you? Do you think you're smelling the skunk ape? Yeah, that's gonna be skunk ape. Though I've never smelled an actual skunk, so it could be that. I wouldn't know. Stella sniffs the air. Yep, that skunk, alright. <laughs> but how else do you think skunk ape got its name? Good to know it might still be in the area. Your quiet moments with Stella is broken by a loud, percussive snort. What was that? Skunk Ape has found us. Duke with the shotgun. That has come for me at last. Goodbye, cruel war. <laughs> oh, no need to come to terms with your own mortality just yet. That's just the sound deer make when they want to warn the rest of their herd about big scary predators like us. Let's check it out. As you and Stella hear the footfalls of animal retreating into the woods, she reaches for her flashlight. A single deer remains behind, staring down the beam of light while Gretchen whines and pulls at her harness. Look at it. Poor deer bee. Poor deer baby. And then it's gone. Jeez, Gretchen, calm down. You're gonna hurt yourself. She cannot handle deer. When she gets like this, I usually have to pick her up and hold her. She has a bad habit of slipping her harness when she wants to go after something. You're too much of a potato and they don't make harnesses to fit potatoes, do they? They really don't. They really don't. I have a French bulldog and uh, yeah, yeah, nothing, nothing fits him properly. He's also sleeping in my lap right now. So if you hear occasional snoring, that, uh, that's him. Yes. 
There was something wrong with that deer. Did you see its face? Now that you mention it, there was something a little off. I bet it was an abscess. Maybe a tumor? It's not like wild animals can get those taken care of. So they just get bigger and bigger. Poor thing. But there is not much we can do about it. Also, the deer was alive. So I don't think the ditchlings necessary, necessarily kill the animals. They are just putting their egg thingies inside them and I guess when they so when they kind of hatch they rip the animal apart why do you bring Gretchen with you she doesn't seem like the safest choice for a hiking companion I actually find her to be quite the opposite sure she wants to chase stuff but I usually let her when I'm not on one of my cryptid hands so I can't hold it against her Yes, allowing your dog to do things that you don't want them to do in other situations, it's not the best parenting. I'm just telling. I'm just happy she is still so feisty, even at her age. Bugs aren't exactly known for their good health, but here she is running around in the woods at 17. 17 is a lot. I mean, my Frenchie is uh, 7 years old right now so if we are aiming for Gretchen we have 10 more years to go and I feel like the fresh mountain air and exercise have helped a lot in that regard well we don't really have mountain air here so you defy the laws of nature don't you Gretchen she is got my heart rate up never too late to turn back oh remain silent hey are you hungry now seems like a great time to take a snack break. You mean we can eat the peanuts? As you settle down to rest, Stella breaks open a bag of assorted snacks. Ooh, let's see. Trail mix, extra M&M's. Snack bar. Which one is that? This is the snack bar? Or this? Oh no, this is the snack bar. My eyes. Yeah, these are bars. Dried apricots. Sesame stick. Sesame, I, I don't know how to pronounce this either. Uh, no thanks, I'm not really hungry. But why can't, why can't, why can't we eat my, my, my peanuts? There is nothing wrong with the peanuts. No wants to eat the peanuts. Uh, dried apricots. I, I like dried apricots. I actually dried these myself. I wound up getting a bunch of apricots for free from Janie a while back and didn't know what else to do with them. What, you can eat them? It's right how easy it is to make your own dried fruit. Uh, I would burn my house down. I would. I would, really. I'm, I'm very bad in the kitchen. I suppose it's a good thing to know about yourself. Yeah, yes, it is. It, it makes it easier to survive if you don't burn your house down. Yes. And if you aren't a kitchen whiz, at least you know, at least you now have the next best thing, a friend who eats. As long as you're in town, don't worry about food. I've got you covered. But that's also a lie. I mean, all this time, she never ever offered me food. There is only one occasion when you can uh, can have breakfast with her, but you also have to go to her place if you want if you want to do that. She never ever offers you food. How rude! You and Stella settle down on, over on an overlook, snacks in hand, as the quiet sounds of evening evening wildlife wash over you. Gretchen knows a stick, distracted for the time being. Oh, I just realized you can't see it, but he here, here in the corner, there is a pair of uh, glowing eyes. He here, you can't see it because Mr. Cat covers it, but uh, I, I suppose that's uh, Wayne's eyes. So, tell me what it's like in Budapest. Do you have a house? An apartment? Do you live with family, roommates, pets? Tell me what it's like to be Mortis. Well, I live in Budapest. 
I live with my dog and my cat. I also have a cat and my boyfriend. And uh, we, we are living happily together. Thank you very much for asking. I live in an apartment with difficult roommate. <laughs> I live in an apartment with a difficult roommate. I didn't find this guy. An old roommate of mine had him move in. Then they left and just stuck me with him. He is not the worst roommate I've ever had, so I can't complain too much. The biggest issue is his complete lack of respect for any boundaries. He sleeps on the couch in the common area most nights, always unclothed. He steals bites of my food, which he thinks he's being really sneaky about, but there is nothing sneaky about taking a, hu a huge bite out of a freshly made sandwich when there are only two of us living there, even if I'm in the other room when it happens. And he infringes on my privacy all the time, too. If I close the door to my room, he will just start screaming and sometimes even attack the door until I open it, then just walk away. It's like he has a complex about closed doors. Which of course also means he doesn't close the door when he's doing his business. Almost like he wants me to watch him. And ah, oh, at least once a week he somehow misses and leaves these big pee puddles which I always wind up stepping in. It's gotten to the point that I think he's causing lasting damage to the house. And no matter what I say or do, it just doesn't get through to him. Anyways, sorry for the rant, but I could go on for hours about this guy. I mean, he's a cat, yeah, but he is a particular terrible cat, and it's not like I can just give him away or anything. That would be cruel. Wait, he's a cat? Like the animal? Yeah, his name is Truck. I'm terrified I won't get my security deposit back because of what he's done to the place. I love this. I love this. This is the best choice of your living situation that you can possibly choose. So, what do you do for a living? <laughs> also, fun fact. Both my uh, dog and cat has a complex about closed doors. Like, you cannot close a door in the house. Otherwise, they are just going on, whining all day until you open the door for them. And then they are just going into the room, checking it out, yeah, nothing. There is nothing in the room that they would need or be interested in at all. So they just go in, check out the, the, the space and uh, come back out and look at you confused. Like, why was it closed if there is nothing interesting inside, mother? Why have you done it to us? And they are just going on with their lives. They are terrible, but I love them both. Uh, well, the fact is that uh, right now I'm in the service industry. I am working on a customer service and uh, I liked it when I started it, but that was four years ago. And right now I really, really don't like it. And also I've had uh, many jobs over the years and I just figured that I, I'm not I'm I'm not really able to fit in, you know, in, into these uh, boxes that society wants to put you into. I'm I'm not really comfortable with these boundaries they they set up for you. So I decided, why don't start a YouTube channel? You know, I uh, I also learned. Uh, I went to art school. I learned pottery. So, yeah, that's not something that you are going to see on the channel because I don't have a workshop yet, but I would very much like one. But the other thing I very much like is, uh, well, all, all forms of art, really. But I like drawing very much and I like strange games, weird little games like this one. So I was like, why don't combine these and start to do something that I, I like and it has a possibility to, to, to make a living out of it. So I would really like to say that I'm a streamer, even though I'm not yet a streamer, but we are going to get there. I'm actually a streamer. 
on the way a fellow content creator that's awesome i knew we had a lot in common martis well honestly only this one only this one stella what sort of streams do you do i play video games I also do art, but uh, you are not going to see it on this channel, at least not yet. Time will decide, honestly. M mostly my time, my free time <laughs> will decide uh, how, how much uh, I can put into drawing next to YouTube. Because I want to do both, I, I want to keep both in my life, but it's, it's hard, honestly next to my full-time job and I have a part-time job and I'm doing YouTube and I'm doing my art so yes it's a uh, it's not easy but I hope that I will be able to figure it out somehow so you can see all of it I mean I mean the videos and the art you don't have to see my my everyday job because it's boring as hell yeah <laughs> I play video games that's cool. I'll have to check out your channel sometime this week. Yes! Yes! And you better say it was amazing because it is amazing. How do you like it? I wouldn't trade it for the world. I used to like it, but now I don't know. Well, this is true for my customer service job. I used to like it and I used to do it uh, with passion, but it just sucks the life out of you. And also, I think it's, it's the case with every job when you have to, to interact with the people daily. It's hard. It's very, very hard. And if you ever go to a restaurant, to a spa, to a wellness hotel, to a, to a customer service, or simply just to the shop on the corner, I highly advise you that you think about what they have to endure every day all day long because we we usually play long hours as well so it's not just I'm, I'm working eight hours right now but i was working in a guest house and i had the 12 hour shifts there so it's it's hard it's mentally and physically draining so always be nice to them just be kind, be patient. They probably had a long day. They probably had several long days in a row. So just be nice to them and uh, and don't don't try to to suck their their energy down even more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the moral of the story. As for the streaming or video creation, I like it. I like it very much so far, even though I, I, failed. <laughs> I failed a lot already. I'm gonna be honest with you. This is the third time I'm recording this video because I always messed up something <laughs> earlier. So yes, it's a long process learning all these things, but I enjoy it and uh, I would like to keep it up. And I hope I wouldn't trade it for the world. We will be the answer even years from now. Most people I meet tend to raise their eyebrows when I tell them what I do, but I love it. I haven't really thought anyone yet. I'm, yes, I'm afraid of the reactions, honestly. It might not be much, but it makes me feel like I'm taking control of my own destiny. That's the other thing that is very important as well, because I really hate that everyone tries to tell you what to do when to do how to do and i just really don't care honestly i i can't i know i don't i want to be the boss of myself if that makes sense i want to be able to to decide for myself and if i mess it up then that's gonna be on me and I'm not going to suffer because of someone else's bad decisions, but I will be the only one to blame. And it's way better, I think, because I'm taking it way better if, uh, if I, I have to, let's say, suffer because of my own mistakes. So yeah, that's, that's how it is for me. Believe me, I can relate. I don't think I would give up what I do for anything. 
a crisp breeze passes over you. What about you? What's your living situation? Gretchen and I live in a little house just outside town. It's actually the house I grew up in, so it has a lot of pleasant memories attached to it, and I'm glad I could keep it in the family. My great-great-grandfather built that house, and he must have done a great job because it's just as sturdy as it's ever been. Oh, do you... No, 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 no. Uh, do you live alone? Yeah, the place used to belong to my parents, but they are not around anymore. And the holler is a small enough place that other folks don't need roommates. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. It's okay, you didn't know. And I've done my morning. You don't have to watch your tongue around me or anything. Life goes on. What, what, what were they like? Did you get along? They were amazing. Two of the nicest people you'd ever meet, and interesting too. My dad was a bit of a regional legend among hunters and trappers. He was always out in the woods on the trail of something, and we certainly had some interesting dinners because of him. He had to learn how to fend for himself, you see, since his family didn't have much growing up. So he learned how to hunt and trap and got damn good at it. He always made sure I had food and that I knew how to get it if I ever found myself too far from a grocery store. Uh, fact is that uh, we also didn't have much uh, when I was uh, younger. So my father and I, well, I think he went with my siblings as well. I have an elder brother and an elder sister. So I think uh, he went with my siblings as well. But I remember that uh, the two of us frequently went uh, fishing. And we always ate the fish that we catched. And these are very nice memories. Thank you very much. But if, <laughs> but if you would send me out to catch some fish for you, I'm afraid I would be in trouble because I was very young. I, I don't know if I would be still able to do that on my own. Yeah, that's it. I could make us a pretty good salad with just what's in this clearing if I had to. Though it wouldn't exactly taste great. Just <laughs> okay. As for my mom, she was a saint. She was the local vet, the lady all the farms in the county knew to call if their animals were in need of something. She was smart as a whip and strong to boot. Turns out, pulling calves out of 1600 pound cows all day is a great way to build muscles. But she was gentle too. Even the smallest mouse would get the proper care in her hands. I'm sure she is most of the reason Gretchen here is one of the oldest dogs I've ever met. So yeah, those are my parents. I'm so we. I guess we're both members of the Dead Moms Club. Ha! I guess we are. You see, she appreciates it. How are you holding up? I'm okay, terribly. I would like to see her go. I don't feel much about it. I'm okay, hanging in there. It was a long time coming, so it wasn't surprised. I had kind of come to I had kind of come to terms with it by the time it actually happened. And it's not all bad. She doesn't have to be in pain anymore. That's a relief. The hospital bills are another story though. Eesh, I can't even imagine how bad that must be. It's just salt in the wound at that point. Wow. Mystical. That sound wasn't meant for human ears. Whatever lurks behind the tree line is something best left unseen. But the events of this evening were already set in motion long before you stepped foot in Scarlet Hollow. There is no turning back now. Stella immediately packs her bag and slings it over her shoulder. Mystica, there is something terrible out there, Stella. Whatever it is, it's close. Well, thank you. Here, hold Gretchen's leash for me and let's check this out. You and Stella each toward the tree line as she shines her flashlight into the woods. As you approach, a series of weak clucks call out from a nearby bush. Maybe Duke's birds weren't eaten after all. Eee, though, baby. What the? What the hell was that? Hold on, I got to play that back. Holy shit! I'm guessing it must be maybe two, three feet tall. 
doesn't look hairy either so i think we can rule out skanky oh stella you are staying still on that but whatever it is it has one of duke's chickens it looks like it's headed north let's go after it uh no just just follow you follow stella as she sprints into the unknown gretchen excitedly pulling you along by her leash there gretchen Oof. Are you okay? Uh, yeah, I'm alright. I just tripped on something weird. Yeah, the chicken. Oh no, the poor thing. It must have been one of Duke's. Oh Jesus, it's still alive. Investigate. You move towards Stella to get a closer look at the chicken. Not that Gretchen, Gretchen too close. She will try to take a bite if you don't stop her. You hold Gretchen's leash close to your chest. She seems nervous, squirming slightly against her harness. Examine the head. Its poor little chicken eyes look up at you, glazed over, but still rolling around in their sockets with unfortunate life. The wing. Looks like this is what Stella slipped on. The wing is barely still attached, but that seems to be the least of this chicken's concerns. Examine the growth. Good God, at first you thought it might have been a tumor but this is something else the skin is stretched taut the growth pulsing beneath having investigated to your heart's content you turn away to give stella room to film aha it seems we found one of duke's chickens folks and she's not looking good i'm hesitant to speculate but she definitely seems to have some sort of growth under her skin could be a tumor, could be something else. Either way, I don't think there is much that can be done for her at this point. Poor chica. Jeez, I'm gonna have to put up some massive content warnings for this video. Hey, do you hear that? What in hills are you two doing out here? Didn't I tell you to... P party? Oh, party, what's wrong, darling? Good God. Did you all see what did this to her? Uh, no. <laughs> it wasn't as pleased as shoot me. Uh, but I'm pretty sure we can hear them. Right now. Oh, don't tell me you're all caught up in Stella's nonsense. Duke, I'm so sorry. We were on the trail when we found her like this. Put that camera away for God's sake, girl. I don't want to be in another of your videos. No one needs to see me like this. No one needs to see Bertie like this. You wouldn't put her online, would you? Not when she's like this, all swollen and hurting. You, did you hear what Morty said? I think they are coming closer. Come out, you sons of bitches. You don't shoot them. We have no idea what will happen. You hear that, Stella? That ain't the sound of something peace-like. Whatever these things are, they will pay for what they did to my girl. Tell me you, whatever your name is, grab that flashlight and help me line up a good shot. As the creatures in the tree line grow louder and more numerous, Gretchen violently strains against her harness. Well... Quick, they are closing in on us. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. I have... A policy. This policy is every time I have talked to animals I save Gretchen and every time I don't have talked to animals I save you. Now this is not the only reason why we are going to save you but but hear me out hear me out okay in our next run, which is gonna be a hardcore run, we are going to save Gretchen, which means Duke will die, right? But I can show you how to resurrect him if if that thing is still in the game. So this is also strictly for a scientific experiment. Please don't hate me too much i know i know i know this is so much unpopular thing in just one video and in my very first video as well but 
this is science okay this is for science purpose and now now that i distracted you i'm, I'm gonna die for the flashlight real quick you dive to the flashlight and swing your body towards the wood i said aim the damn thing quick light perfect look at it though look at look at the dough boy just grazed it but that should make it pretty easy to track eh stella the blood yeah blood trail is pretty hard to miss guess we know it wasn't mountain lions after all though it didn't look like any cryptid i've heard of either this is gonna be one hell of a video as your heartbeat settles you realize that gretchen stopped tugging at her leash you look down only to find an empty harness and the paw prints of a runaway dog wait where is gretchen where is my dog I warned you both, if we stayed out here, something terrible would happen. Uh, yes. I, uh, I saw we... She must have slipped out of her harness. I'm so sorry, Stella. I tried to hold on to her. Gretchen, I'm coming for you. I'll be damned if I let her chase after those things alone. Alone, you have no choice but to follow Duke and Stella into the darkness. Guess I will die. I guess I will die. You think to yourself, a coward to your core. Oh. As the dark of the night surrounds you, the sound of a snapping branch cuts into your ears. If you are going to die, it might as well be on your feet, surrounded by other people, rather than in the woods alone, by monsters or slow starvation. You steal your nerves and run after Duke and Stella. As you push deeper into the woods, the unearthly sounds once again surround you. Keep running. Are you trying to get us lost? Slow down! Oh, look at those faces! I didn't even realize they had teeth. Oh my god. And whose hand is that? Is it your feet? Is that your footsie? I think we're almost there. The trees are starting to thin out. Oh, look at those faces. Oh, you have six arms! What the hell? Lord, that smell! The shrieks pull back into steady whispers as you Stella and Duke stumble upon the putrid bodies of dozens of dead and dying animals. Yeah, don't really look at it, okay? Okay. Also, also, here is your mountain lion, okay? And here is the occasional black bear. And, uh, and that's not Gretchen at all. No, don't, don't look at that. At the edge of it all, an immobilized Gretchen gurgles in pain as one of the creatures looms over her. Also, I want you to know that it took me so long to realize that when they later on in the game talk about this uh, circle of corpses, they mean circle like this. This is how the circle goes and for so long my mind just couldn't recognize it i just saw it as as one big mess of dead animals i i really didn't see the the spiral they talk about a sinking realization pulls at your gut this is their nest and you are surrounded gretchen Estella steps towards them as Duke pulls her back. They want us to leave, Stella. What do we do? They got her. Uh, yes. I mean, I mean, this isn't over. We can still save her. I know we can't. I just, I just want to, you know. Duke, can't you just like shoot that thing? Are you out of your mind? There's got to be dozens of those things up in the trees. They are circling, circling us to protect their brood or whatever it is they've been planting in our animals. We've got to get out of here while we still can. I mean, if I decided to kill Gretchen, I should at least be nice about it, right? I, Duke is right. There is nothing we can do right now, but Jesus Christ, I can't leave Gretchen like this. Duke, give me your gun. You're not thinking about... She's my dog, Duke. 
We can't save her, but I will be damned if we leave her behind to suffer like the rest of these animals. Uh, let me do it. Maybe you will let me do it. I know she's your dog, Stella, but you don't have to do it this yourself. I can take the shot. <gasps> yes! I. Alright, thank you. Aim through. So, if uh, you were nice enough to Stella, she is letting you shoot Gretchen for her, so, so he don't have to do it. You grab Duke's gun and take careful aim. Also, why can we shoot? I mean, I assume it's not going just like this. You you have practice and things. I don't even know how to aim a uh, 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 shotgun. Cool, sure. Run! Oh, baby! You, you are freshly hedged, right? You are a pity baby. Itty pity baby. As soon as the gun fires, you still and you sprint back through the woods. The unearthly hollers and whispers of the nest nipping at your heels. Yeah, they're not happy, that's for sure. In the highest branches of trees and down on the forest floor, they are all around you, casually keeping pace with your all-out sprint, so they are fast. Quick, my truck's down this way! Can you see it? Those are little hands! Those are little hands trying to grab the chicken thingy! Wow, how close they are! You make it to the road, but three of the creatures stand between you and Duke's track. Now, if you have strong beard, you're not only able to save both Duke and Gretchen, but here you can punch the ditch legs, which is very funny if you ask me, and you can also save uh, Bertie, which is very interesting, because she has... Uh, Baby, ditchling, thingy, uh, planted into her. And I have a run when I saved everyone, all three of them. So I can't wait to see what's gonna happen then, uh, then the ditchling hatches from Bertie on Duke's farm. So yeah. Mr. Top, you've stolen from them, Duke. You have to give them back what's theirs. Mortis is right, Duke. Bertie, she's part of the brood now. Is this what you want? Is this what you want, you sons of bitches? Fine, take her. Take her and leave us be. Duke, get in the truck and let's get the hell out of here. Duke, do we have to take the truck? I can just walk. Those creatures left. I'll be fine. Stella, now is really not the time. All right, I can do this. You squeeze into Duke's tiny two-seater truck, tucking your legs on either side of the gear shift. I'm sorry, the gear shift. Stella stares ahead and in silence next to you. There you go. So I guess it wasn't a mountain life. That was fun. That was fun. Why would anyone say that? That was fun. Maybe on an asshole run. If we do an asshole run, we will say that. Terrifying. Stella, you good. I'm sorry. Stella, you good. She doesn't respond. You wanted to find cryptids. Shouldn't you be overjoyed? My man. My man. The asshole run. This is, this is asshole run right here. Mm. Place a comforting hand on her shoulder. You reach out and rest your palm gently on her shoulder. She jumps slightly at her touch, but remains focused on the wilderness rolling past the window. That was fun. Mm. You should remain silent. You let the silence continue, staring out at the road ahead. Every now and then you spot what look like pale, anguished faces peeking out from between the trees, before vanishing back into the underbrush. I just realized, though, what the, the ditchlings remind me of. You know how these, these look like? These faces? They look like uh, if you watch the 
Diploma Talaka Miss Brotherhood. And there is Envy. And Envy is true form, that big dog kind of thingy with all these uh, human torsos and f faces just hanging out of him, uh, also in misery and despair. That's that's what they remind me of. Also, you should watch From Alch Alchemist Brotherhood if you haven't already, because uh, that's a great anime. Soon, the rumble of gravel beneath the tires give way to uneven pavement, and the track comes to a stop in front of a small cottage. Thanks for taking me home, Duke. Anytime, but Jesus, Mary and Joseph, what were those things? I have no idea. I never heard of anything like them. But I got a ton of footage. Nothing really clear, but it's a start. Hmm. I'd better go check in with Bo. He will be worrying about me. You and your friend stay safe. Looks like those things didn't follow us, but, well, no point in talking about the bots. Just look out for yourselves. Take care. Can you take me home? But I don't live here. Can you take me home? Hell no, I ain't your private chauffeur. Stay with Stella tonight. She's got the space, ain't you, girl? Yep, totally. I've got a guest bedroom with a bed and everything. Sheets even. There, taken care of. And here you are, back in town, away from the woods, with no one but Stella in sight. Your phone buzz is in your pocket. Now that you're back in town, you must finally have reception again. Six missed calls from Tabitha. October 24th. Message, where are you? Where the hell did you... <laughs> She's not happy. And 13 text messages. Uh, call her. You try and call a bit of back, but it goes straight to voicemail. Text her that we're okay. Or we can text her that she needs to calm down. That's the ass horror as well. You text a bit of back and let her know you're okay. Your message sits unread. Yes, Tabitha seems worried. It's pretty late, isn't it? God, what a mess this night's been. Uh, wait, <laughs> no, no, no. Stella, I hope you don't mind me asking, but why on earth did you ask Duke if you could walk back? <laughs> I just don't like cars, it's all. They are rolling death machines, if you ask me. And yeah, knowing your past, they are. They are. Sorry if I weirded you out. I'm so I'm so sorry about Gretchen. There is nothing we could have done. I just have to accept what happened and move on. She was 17 after all. It's not like we had many years left. But why did it have to happen like that? It's my fault. Yes, it's my fault. I'm sorry. I should have grabbed her. Mortis, you were in an impossible situation and you made a difficult choice. It's done. And I'm not going to hold it against you. That's good to hear. Neither of us needs to go back and relieve that moment. You should call the cops, but for what? I mean, I understand that you think you should call the cops if uh, Duke dies, but calling the cops because something in the woods killed your dog? I mean, you know, you should call like animal control or pest control or something, but not the cops. Uh, what do you make of everything we saw? I don't know. I haven't seen or read about anything like this. Although maybe we've got to find out more about those things. The library doesn't open for a while, so any real research will have to wait until the morning. Any real research? I mean, you're a YouTuber. You, you live on the internet. Why can't you just research on the internet what do you mean real research i mean don't get me wrong i have nothing against books and libraries but i don't get the logic here that being said there is someone in town who might have some useful information my friend's mom her place isn't far we should head over now before it gets any later i should check in on tabitha I should probably check in on Tabitha. 
My friend's place is on the way back and stopping by shouldn't take long. You sure you don't want to stop in first? I know I wouldn't want to head up this mountain road by myself after everything that's happened tonight. I'm going to go with you, but only because I killed your dog, so... Oh, fine, let's do this. Cool, let's go. I hope she's still awake. Mountains. Jesus! You and Stella tend to see a shadowy figure staring at you from across the road. You didn't hear it approach. And also, he didn't have his clothes thingy on his face yet. When <sighs> you're finally back where you belong. And you are saying that when you meet Wayne, I mean, isn't it a bit concerning, you know? Before you can respond, the door behind you swings open. An older woman stands in the entryway. Hi, Sidi. Go home, Wayne. I can't help you tonight. You look back and the figure is already gone, disappeared into the shadows of the night. I'm sorry about that, Stella. Some people just can't be helped. What brings you out here so late? And who is this? Hi, Miss Forsyth. This is Mortis. Is it okay if we come in? Mystical. You and Miss Forsyth briefly lock eyes. She's impenetrable, and you feel small and almost naked in her presence. There is something about her that's far beyond you, but you feel no threat, no malice. And then the moment passes and you see only the middle-aged woman before you. Of course, of course, you're in luck. I just put on water for hibiscus tea. Ah, hibiscus tea. And for goodness sake, you can call me Sibyl. You're an adult now, after all. Okay. How? How? When? When was the last time Stella visited Kanika or Sibyl? If Sibyl only says it just now like she only tells her to call her Sibyl because she is an adult like how long ago have Stella not visited welcome to my little nook thank you we'll take a look it's very pretty he is a daddy Kanika's daddy who, who has passed recently well recently it was a few years ago I guess life is no tea is life Tea is life, but also life is tea. I, I, can, I can greatly agree with that. Oh, magic ball. And all the dried herbs and crystals and everything. You are a fucking queen. Yes. Welcome to my little nook. Yes, yes. It's nice to finally meet you, Mortis. I was so sorry to hear about your mother. Vivian was such a lovely soul and she's been sorely missed in the holler. And now poor Perlan is gone as well. Do let me know if there is anything you need while you're in town. Also, offer the peanuts! Yes! You hold out your bag of peanuts as a gift to Sibyl. She offered you and Stella tea after all. And it's only polite to offer something in return. Oh my, thank you for the kind offer, dear. But I'm afraid it's far too late for me to have something so salty. Why is everyone being so nice about my peanuts? Uh, who was that outside? Just a very sick man. You don't need to be worried about him. You knew my mom? Of course, dear. She was a good friend of mine for many years. She was such a lovely woman. You should come by sometime. I can delight you with unsavory tales of her you. How did you know that she died? Oh, Perlan was a chatty woman. Not much went on that I wouldn't get an earful of. Bless her heart. I never met Perlan. You don't have to pass all your condolences to me. I have no feelings about the woman. Yes, we are pretty straightforward. <laughs> That's fair, child. But it seemed like the right thing to do. We need your help. Ah, yes, I suppose pleasantries can wait for another time. What's got you here so late? You seem troubled. You know about weird stuff, right? Unexplainable stuff? 
I'm not so sure I follow there. I know which OS to use for which eggs. I know a bit of, uh, about classical spiritualism. Just what sort of unexplainable things are you talking about? We ran into some creatures out in the woods. These things. I don't even know how to describe them. Mm, I can't say I know much about local wildlife. My daughter has always had a brighter gift for nature than I. This wasn't uh, this wasn't the local wildlife, Miss Forsyth. Here, I can show you. Tala pulls out her camera and tilts the screen towards Sibyl. Ah, one of your little videos. <gasps> Where was this? Up the mountain to the northwest? Within the town limits? Yeah, I see. Is there a way to make the video bigger? And louder if you can? I would need to plug the memory card into a computer. I could go back and get mine. Also, shh, shh, shh. Do you hear that? It's the water for the tea. Is it boiling right now? And you do not hear it? But I do. No need. Kanika should still be awake. She can lend us hers. You'd better come with Stella. I'm sure she will be more willing to help a friend than her nosy mother. Kanika, come on out. We could use a little help. Also, check out her stickers. Like, you can say <laughs> the stage is, it is early childhood, but the stickers probably uh, wouldn't come off easily. Or it would be, you know, uh, ugly when you when you try to get those off and uh, a bit of a paper and uh, glue still uh, remains on the door. And this is, this is the teenage hood when she became a golf. What, mom? Oh, it's Stella. Hey, Stella. And a stranger. A cute stranger. Ah, did you just call me cute? Oh, or for the peanuts. Oh, oh, it's hard. It's a hard decision. Oh, I want to flirt with Nix. Ah, did you just call me cute? No, you must have misheard me. You must be Tabitha's cousin. Am I? Yep. Sweetie, we were wondering if we could borrow your laptop. Stella and her friend have a video to show us. It's really important, Kanika. Okay, the same I'm sure. My room is a mess, I'll just bring it out there. Heads up, Kanika, this is a uh, graphic. There is a lot of dead and sick animals on the recording. You know I have a harder stomach than any of our friends. I'm pressing play. Silence washes over the room as the video plays. Stella, what the hell is this? Did you film it? Was that Gretchen at the end there? Stella, where is Gretchen? It's my fault, sure enough, she said she didn't make it. It's my fault. I was holding her leash and she got away from me when those creatures surrounded us. We shot her, Kanika. Those things, they put something in her and I wasn't about to let her suffer. Stella, I'm so sorry. It's okay, I'm fine. I just want to know what did this to her. Unfortunately, if these creatures are what I think they are, what happened to Gretchen is but the start of something far more sinister. My grandmother called them ditchlings, and they are a terrible omen, a sign of great suffering and destruction to come. Mom, come on, this is serious. Stop scaring Stella and Mortis with this daily po crap. She just lost her dog, have some respect. Kanika, sweetie, let your mother talk. The creatures themselves are harmless to people, despite that grisly scene in the woods. But just as birds flock before a storm, the ditchlings congregate where tragedy is soon to fall. To see one is to be cursed by fate. To see so many in one place is... Sibyl holds her silent. Jesus, mom, they've clearly had a rough night. They don't need this. It's okay, Kanika. This is helpful. Stella, whatever these things are, they aren't magic. 
We can't rule that out, not after what we saw. But fine, let's focus on what we know. Whatever they are, they are doing something to these animals. You saw that nest. What were those growths? Uh, making, maybe they are making more of themselves. Yeah, maybe what we are seeing here is some sort of parasitic larva stage, part of their life cycle. But I don't want to jump to any conclusions about something this out there, not without doing some research or talking to a biologist. I'm sure there is a rational explanation that will clear all of this up. Oh dear, I'd forgotten entirely about the tea I put on. Let me fix you up a couple of cups, it will help soothe your nerves. I didn't and I even heard it. I don't know, it's getting late and I should let Mortis get some rest. Yes, you should. I ran her wreck today with all the hiking and running through the woods in terror. Yes, you did. Still wired. No, it was nice meeting you. You don't have to leave on my account. I can stay up, this is important. <laughs> okay, maybe it's that I'm eager to get home and start doing some research. You see? On the internet, I don't know what was that about the library and real research. I will ask around on my usual forums to see if anyone has information on ditchlings. Is that what you call them? That's right. You go home now and do try to get some rest. Don't stay up all night on the online. Oh. Let me get you some of my house-made peppermint tea to go. It really does wonders to soothe the soul. I like tea. Bye, Stella. Bye-bye! I'll see you tomorrow, okay? And call me if you need to talk. Thanks, Kanika. I'll see ya. Bye, Mortis. Oh, okay, then now. Bye-bye! It's excellent, iced or warm. Though, with the nights getting chillier, warm will probably be best. Helps wake up the bones. Thank you! Be careful out there, both of you. Sibia turns and closes the door behind her. Alrighty, let's head back home. My home, I mean. And why can I not just walk home by here? Why do I have to go back to your place to tell you that I want to go back to my place? And here we are. You're welcome to stay the night if you want, but I don't. Yeah, I think we can each use some company tonight. No, 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 no. Uh, I should probably, <laughs> maybe for Tabitha has a conniption. Uh, I should probably head back and check on Tabitha. That's sweet of you, I know. Are you sure you're okay heading back up that mountain alone? I'm more terrified of Tabitha than those things in the woods. Yes. Honestly, I'm more afraid of making Tabitha mad than I am of those things in the woods. <laughs> yeah, Tabi can be really intimidating. Well, I won't stop you if you really want to go back. Here's my number. Call me when you get there, okay? And good luck. Now. The thing is, we can get her number. We are going to get into a group chat with Kanika. But why can we not contact Reese in any possible way? When we are going to his house for dinner, we are not able to ask for his number or invite him to the group chat or just chat with him at all. Why is that? Why is that? I understand this whole... Uh, mystical and uh, isolated uh, depressed artist thing but you can be mystical and depressed without being completely isolated you know I mean I get it why he's isolated but I can call him can I not I mean if Stella can call him then I can call him you and Stella exchange numbers I'll see you tomorrow yeah, we're in this together. Yeah, we are. Stay safe, buddy. Bye-bye. You begin the long hike back up to the Scarlet Estate alone. Continue. Almost home. No dishlings in sight yet. Continue. You've made it. Look uh, how, how Tabitha left the light on for us. She cares for us. Your salvation in sight. You make a mad dash to the door. Try the door. As you reach for the knob, the door swings open. Angie. 
Where the hell have you been? And did you seriously yes, why I screamed after I specifically told you not to? What about the mac and cheese? Will you realize that? Unbelievable. I called you back as soon as I had reception. Did you? I didn't notice. Do you know anyone named Wayne? I employ over a hundred people. I'm sure I know a Wayne. Hi, Tabby. Horrible things. I want to leave. Look, I got suckered into something. It was weird. Sorry to worry you, this Stella girl had me come with her on this night hike to find cryptids. Oh, so you met Stella then. Oh, that explains everything. And she's got you all worked up. But that doesn't excuse the theft of my ice cream. And you will pay for that. Just you wait and see. Alright. I'm going to bed. i see you tomorrow. I wonder... If we eat her ice cream and then we have a bad relationship with her, then is it going to be more of a consequence than, than just uh, her wanting us to pay for the ice cream? I guess we have to do the asshole run uh, this way, you know, to be, to be on very, very bad terms with her. Good night. Can you tuck me in? <laughs> <laughs> okay, good night. You're alone in this state. The sound of the wind whistling through the house gives you an uneasy feeling in your gut. It's probably best to turn in and try to leave the night behind you. As you settle into your room, you remember that Stella asked you to call her once you got back. Fine, but only because I killed your dog. Call her. You pull out your phone and call. Hey, how are you? She sounds a little different, like she's been crying. Of course she's been. Did you make it back all right? I died, actually. Uh, yeah, how are you? Are you okay? Totally fine. I mean, as fine as I could be, I guess. You don't have to worry about me. Go get some Z's, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. From the relative safety of this uncomfortable bed, the events of the past evening seem like something that happened to someone else. Though you can still clearly picture the terror you felt in those moments, for now, you're safe and you're warm. Eventually, the sun will rise and chase away the monsters and make them seem like nothing but bad dreams. Maybe tomorrow, if you're lucky, you'll wake up in the normal world and have a boring week in the mountains with your sour-faced cousin. It's a nice thought, but deep down, you can't help but worry that things will only get worse. This is uh, Sibia's room, I guess, with all the magic books and the tea. Ree's in the basement, poor Bebe. Rosalina's room with the ghost. at the church and the hole in the background we don't yet know what's in there maybe giant rats and uh, this is maybe has to do something with Big Betty but I only assume that the mines where we are gonna go in the next chapter and the forbidden wing and uh, the little handle on the door, I don't know if you saw that, it has the same uh, goat head that uh, was also on the door in the estate. This is where the entity is sealed away, also in the Forbidden Wing.
Yay! This is the end of episode one. Episode two away. Uh, yes, I'm saving it right now. Uh, Jesus Christ, right here. Yes. Okay, so this was the first episode. I hope you enjoyed it. We have three more to go. I can't wait chapter five to get released. We are going to discuss all the opinions on the story so far, all of our theories after we've done both playthroughs, because that will be the part when we will have all the information we can possibly have. Well, not all of them, but uh, most of them, I guess. So I will see you in the next video. And no one likes outros, so bye!